Okay, so we'll uh, convene the uh, Board of Architects Review meeting for December 2017, and we'll take a roll call. Mm -hmm. Joseph Clark, Chairman. He's here. John Fry. Here. Michael Beldotti. Here. Walter Ludlum. Here. Reginald Bush. Here. Barbara Kukowski. Here. Dr. Pawan Aria. Here. Mark Malone, Corporation Counsel. Yes. Lynn Brooks Abney, Director of Planning and Development. Yes. And we have Joe Tremelli from Colored Sessions. Great. All right, so let's start the night with 73 Clinton Avenue. Uh, the owner is seeking to enclose an existing front porch. Who's here to, uh, to speak to this? I know they're here. Okay, so we'll hold you over to the architect. Good enough. All right, so we'll move along to 168 Revolutionary Road. The applicant is proposing additions to an existing house to construct a new bathroom, laundry, study, and remove an existing car park to construct a one car garage, as well as other changes. Okay. <laughs> standing at the back there, and our wonderful architect, uh, Mr. Bob Zumwal. Uh, we've just bought this property, 168 Revolutionary Road. Um, it's, a, it's a home that uh, my husband and I hope to retire in. Uh, it's, a, it's an old house that is in need of um, a significant updates. And as we've um, moved into this house, uh, our hope is to add to the, the, the river facing side of the, the house uh, at about 1,200 feet altogether, which includes uh, six feet, uh, an additional six feet out facing the river on the, on the first level, as well as the bedroom, extend the bedrooms upstairs. Uh, as you enter the house, we'd like to take in the front, uh, the porch uh, that exists, which is leads to the main entrance of the house. We'd like to take that in, convert the existing laundry room, which is um, sort of awkwardly placed. So um, I can point to this. This part of the, this is the existing porch, which we'd like to take in. There's a, uh, a, a car port here, which leads into the base, uh, into a laundry room. We'd like to convert that into the main entrance. And above that, if this is just a one floor uh, entrance, we'd like to build on top of that, uh, add, move the laundry room to here, add a new bathroom here. Uh, on top of this porch that we'll be taking there, we'd like to extend the master bedroom out to um, uh, sort of expand the exist, to sort of create a um, master closet. Um, the house currently has a flat roof. We'd like to um, build, uh, to make a pitched roof on top, uh, and that will be an unfinished attic. So this is the, uh, the part of the house that you um, drive into. Um, hopefully you have, um, and Bob, you might need to help me here. Um, the left side, that you're facing the, the house. So I think you need to go out with the microphone. <laughs> What you see here is the left side of the house, and uh, the left uh, to the left of this is the part that faces the river. And to the right of this is the entrance side. And uh, basically, we have the, the pitch roof and, and the, first, the basement, first and second floor. Okay. This is the Side that faces the river, the river side, and uh, we 
try to maximize the view of the views that we did there. Could you talk about the materials of construction, what the finishes are? Yes. Uh, this is all hardy plank siding, uh, fiber cement siding, and uh, fiber cement. Um, looks like wood, but it doesn't require the maintenance. Colors are? I have samples if you'd like to see them. Uh, basically, the siding is gray and the trim is white. Shingles are? Two shingles are? Two shingles are black. Black and the uh, all the balusters are going to be painted, stained. The railings uh, are. So this is the, <coughs> the flooring. Right, the deck. And the deck will be um, ASAC? Or? Uh, yeah, it's uh, ASAC or Trex, one of the two composition deckings. And uh, the railing, uh, I'm thinking of making it wood, wood grain uh, finish, the brown finish. Like All the siding? All the yes. siding, yes. yes. So the shed dormers on the back are existing? Uh, no, actually these are, this pitch roof is a new roof. It's a flat roof now. Okay. And these dormers are in the attic, right, mainly for, to get some light in the attic. And it's an unfinished attic. Okay. I'm good. Any questions from no? Any questions from the public? No questions from the public. Is there a motion to approve the uh, plan to submit it then? So moved. Right, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One. Barbara, Barbara second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carry. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Good presentation. The architect. Okay. We won't, we won't forget. Okay, so we, we're going to adjourn for a while the uh, 73 Clinton Avenue until the architect arrives. And we'll move along to um, Plateau Associates. Plateau is adjourned. Plateau Associates is adjourned. They're here. They're here. Okay. So we'll go looking for a minute. <coughs> So while we'll do a little house cleaning, Baker is adjourned. Uh, anybody came to speak to uh, Crowe Avenue tonight? Baker is adjourned till January. 11 Hudson Street is also adjourned. Is adjourned. Uh, we'll come. We'll start after we're finished with uh, with the BAR. We'll go back to 25 Terrace. Okay. So. Yes. Okay. You're up. Good. You can step up to the microphone. Uh, it's better to come this way. Yes. Architectural Consulting Engineers, and I have uh, Stella Belais with me. She's uh, the architect who worked on this project, and uh, I'm going to turn the microphone down. Okay. There you go. That was easy. <laughs> um, we are, I guess, requesting they are going to just want to enclose that existing front porch on the first floor, make it a livable, a livable space, and kind of make it a uh, match with the existing house. There really there's no drastic change at all. So the other three sides stay the same? Yes. Okay. Well it's open on three sides. Oh, oh the other three sides yes. of yeah, the porch is three sides. Right. It's, and yeah. the rest of the house is they the want to enclose it and just add a, a little a powder room in there to make it a little easier so they don't have to go up and down. Sure. Can you uh, oh, do we have any 
No variances are required? No. Okay. Um, can we see the proposed <coughs> Okay. So proposed? Left? Yeah, the front is the uh, left of the elevation. They're just changing the door, putting some uh, transom and side lights to it just to get some light in there. A little best view. And uh, they're using, they have those two existing windows. They're just bringing it forward down. One of the things also that we're doing, and uh, currently they have a flat roof over here. Right. So we, we all framed it to give it a little bit of slope. The only flat roof area would be just above the door, which is raised a little bit. Okay. And the materials are to, to match? Yes, they can be matching with material, the yeah. The portico yeah. is, is an addition. Right? The portico over the steps? Yes. Yes. And then a little cover over the platform. Above the portico, it's tough to tell what that is. Is it like a metal railing? It's a, it's a wrought iron. They wanted to use a little bit of what they existing what they have existing on the side, so they're just gonna put it on top. So it doesn't go anywhere. I'm sorry? It no, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just okay. a okay. okay. Any questions? No. Board. 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 Good. The best maintained house in the block. <laughs> what happened to this Japanese name? <laughs> um, any questions from the staff? No. no. Um, okay. No. Just, no. just one question. I don't, um, the way the, the assessor's map and the way their um, engineer drew the plan, <clears throat> it's unclear whether or not they cross the village right away from the front parts of the front path. I'm looking for the drawing of it. It's not a survey. They prepared it with an engineer. I'm looking for the drawing. We have an older survey that we created a, uh, a site plan, if you will. Top plan. Mm -hmm. Top plan. Do you have that part with you? Yeah. Because that's where it um, is. While we're looking, please you elaborate on what you mean by what, what's encroaching on the villages right away? The sidewalks? It's unclear. Yeah. Oh, so, so the, so the, so the question one. is right. about the block exactly. money. The, the one that you laid out with your signature. Okay. Do you have that one? Yes, right it's here? right here. Did you have it with the building? Yes. This is where they draw their property lines. Like, I think their property line is pretty careful. If you go there, Nobody if you just point to the property line and you see where the, the path continues, see? that's their property so that's line. That's the property but then the line. Path continues. And, the si and, the, and their essentially sidewalk goes to the street. <coughs> so, yeah. And, and, and so what? It's fine with that stuff. Not really relevant to what we're doing here, is it? I don't have to get there, right? I think it's no different than a driveway connection to the street. Yeah. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Super. So now we're all good. Okay. Any questions from the public? Any questions from the public? Is there a motion to approve the plan? I'll, I'll move it. I'll I'll second. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds like he's seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Good to go. Reggie, you won that race, right, on the second? I think Thank so. You. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Back on track. Thank you. Thank you. Terrace Avenue here? Yes. Okay. So the excavation is no permit to construct the driveway and retaining it.
we've done some testing um, for percolation and everything was came out. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Uh, yes, um, everything came out right. Uh, we have a proper rate, and um, um, we are proposing the driveway to be asphalt and uh, on the parking lot, uh, which will have four parking spaces, to be um, porous asphalt, which allows the water to percolate. And um, basically, everything is explained on the plans. Uh, in terms of coverage, uh, we do maintain that we uh, will need 31 percent of the laboratory. And um, I think that's it. So, did the porous count toward coverage or no, not? No, it didn't. Ah. It, it allows the water to percolate, and we test the entire area. We have very good percolation rate. So, but I think here's this question has come up before. The intent, the original intent. I obviously can't speak to the original intent. But historically, the coverage has been more about the visual impact of how much of the site is covered. Not so much tied to, if at all, the porous versus non-porous part of the site. Because I, I think it's safe to say when the 40% coverage or any of the coverage metrics were developed, there was no... It was for impervious surfaces only because uh, co uh, the house coverage, principal building coverage is different. And uh, we um, look into uh, ASNIC code to find out that um, not necessarily all uh, covered areas are counting as um, uh, hard surfaces. Uh, I believe there is a... Long, long building department uh, made a determination that in instances like this with impervious materials, whether it be pavers or uh, a porous pavement such as this, that a credit for the land disturbance or land coverage rather be given. Is it a one-to-one -one credit? Uh, no. For this particular application, I, I believe he did give it a one-to-one. -one. Uh, because of the material proposed, but there have been instances where a paver system was used, um, and he would right. prorate it. You know, based on the manufacturer and the, their present percent void space, he would give them that credit. And I'm and I, I, I'm <coughs> obviously not in the position to overrule that notion, of the, the term, but <coughs> you can see where I'm headed, mm -hmm. right? That this app, this or any applic applicant, if we have applied that notion with porous material, you could cover the entire site with the porous material, <clears throat> and I would suggest that's not the nature of what site coverage is trying to accomplish. It's trying to maintain a balance of, you know, of house and, and horizontal services on a site, um, and so that's why I ask if, if that because it doesn't, when you look at that, it looks like it's more than 40% of the site. Well, we still have a lot of green areas. We're creating a, a nice balance. This is a two family house that requires two, two parking spaces for each unit, uh, which does not provide right now. So that will take four parking spaces off of the tree um, and improve the, the area. Uh, and I, I follow those talking points, and I'm not saying I disagree with them, but I am saying that footprint of the large square, whether it's porous or not, is perhaps not consistent with what happens in these zones. <clears throat> and, I, and again, I'm not, I, I think it, now it's become an interpretation by the gatekeeper for zoning, and so I can't question that. But I can say as a planning board member, that's quite an impact, right? That clearing of that area, whether it's asphalt or porous material or whatever, 
is probably inconsistent with the fabric of that neighborhood. So I don't. Do you, do you know the the percent coverage of if you were to just look at the plan area, regardless of the makeup of the driveway and the parking area? Do you know what the coverage of the lot is? I think the lot area is seven thousand three hundred, and the building area is twelve hundred, which is uh, eighteen percent right now. For just the building, correct. But if you were to include, to, to John's point, if you were to include the walkways, the driveway, and the parking area in the back, do you know what that total area would be? Thirty-two. As a percentage of the site. Well, uh, per per code, which is the the two seven the two seven zero dash four definition, says that um, per definition listed in the section, retaining walls, paved areas, or terraces are not included in coverage calculation if they they um, a certain height. If they what? If they um, if they are a certain height. Mm. Let's say up that's, to that's building coverage you're referring to, correct? Alarm coverage. So is there is there any retaining walls? There are some small retaining walls um, as you can see. I mean, right now we're removing, but the, the ones in the, in the back of the house. The house is the height? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. So they're relatively low. Yeah. The so existing walls. I had some questions on the proposed walls, but we can. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what's going on in the back. Since it's, is it, is it, does uh, it pitch with the land? There's or? two tiered walls in the far right corner. Correct. They they about, um, as you can see, they're, they're heights um, from 101 to one or two and a half this is part of this wall and then there's a slope area grass area and there's a second tier which is from uh, a one of four to one of five and a half so they we, we slope the area with the land um, making like two tier smaller walls From I just I, I was in uh, our memo. We just questioned, <coughs> I guess, one the ability to construct those walls on their on your property because it's that second tier is right on the property line. So, and we don't have details of the wall, so we'd like to make sure that you can actually build that and stay on your property yeah, and not affect the neighbor's issues. property. And there's um, some existing looks like there's some existing vegetation along the lot line. I don't know who owns that, but it's proposed or it has to be removed to build the walls. Yeah, in, and then there's a lack of screening there in order to build these walls. But something for the, the board to discuss. In terms of runoff, um, there is no runoff in this area and runoff from the driveway, which is up ten percent. Uh, will be collected in a trench lane that goes into the, the recharger. Mm -hmm. What's the approximate dimensions of that square? I don't have it here in front of me. The hatch square that's the porous. 36 by 40. 46, I would say. Four car. Okay, so what type of what type of buffers are between the properties now? Oh, there. Um, right now, you know, this is the next door property. Um, Right now, you see they have a retaining wall, they have a driveway, there are some bushes here which um, we will be removing. So is there any plan to put screening back in the buffer? Definitely we, we will be putting stuff around this line where we have a room. Right. And what about the other side? The other side, uh, we have, well, we, we maintain our four feet of the property, uh, as well as here. Is there um, anything I mean, there? Is there anything there that you're cutting down to make this? Uh, there is one tree coming down here. In the middle. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it's, it's this one. <coughs> 
So is there excavation or is there fill or is there both? Yeah, there is excavation of um, 177 cubic feet. So th is there any dirt coming in or leaving? No, it's not coming in. So it's just in. readjusted It's, it's leaving. Leaving. The, okay. And is there any change in grade from what's present now? Uh, pretty much we maintain the existing yeah. grades, you know, in, in the area. Well, the grades got to be changing if there are right. too many walls, walls where there are none. But yeah. we're following the grade. We're not really cutting no, through it. Well, you're, yeah, but you're tapering, right? So you're gonna you're gonna make you're gonna make the flat you're gonna make the park the paving area flat. Yeah, paving area. That's you're, the so area. So you're gonna move the pitch down. We're making it flat. So, yeah, so, it, so when you join the, when you join the property that's not going to be disturbed, it's got to be of a steeper angle than what that proposed parking area is, is approximately four feet lower than a neighbor's property when you're done. Four or five feet, if I remember. From the front to the back, it looks like there's about a six or seven foot maybe well, for change. Um, uh, 107.5, uh, the wall is 106.5. So, 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 for the back part of the lot, I'm actually going to ramp up. Yes. So I'm carving out, and then, well, I'm not carving out. Right now, it slopes gradually to the back of the property. Right. Actually, it's about you're seven. Gonna, you're going to flatten that, and then, that, and then yes. you're going to ramp up. Uh, that, uh, then there is existing um, existing slope, as you can see, it's very minor. Right. Four, three or four feet. The, the, the two tiered walls in the, in the very corner, they're about three and a half feet high each. Each. Each yeah. tier. Thank you. Okay. So the walls will be in this area that there is. With sloping so now, and we're just going to create one tier here. And, and we're going to be able to grade. There's enough between the property line and the wall to manage the grade. Without the walls? Well, the well, walls are up. Right. And now i got a great backfill against the wall from the adjoining property. That's your question, actually, is how are you going to construct that wall right. without going onto the other property? Correct. Is so the wall on the property is <coughs> offset? It appears to be offset. The, the plan shows the back face of the wall immediately on the property line, uh, which is fine if there's nothing behind the wall system to make the wall work, drainage, a footing, but we don't have the details, so I don't know that. If, if footings extend beyond oh, the property line so, or, so or drainage associated with the wall. So, all right. Okay. We have agreement with the neighbor. He is uh, collaborating. Well, that's fine. With us. <laughs> The question is, I think we all understand what you're doing. Do we have enough information at this moment to approve the plan subject to? Or do we need you to meet with the engineer and resolve the questions? Because you know the footing, the footing is going to be wider than the wall. So there's going to be at least three, four inches of space between the property. If you, even if you set the footing on the property line. The wall is going to be inset on the property, right? Right. Okay. I think she said she's maintaining the four feet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, four feet for the driveway. Yeah. Uh, but not for the, the wall. Not for the top of the second wall. Yeah. All right. So, so, I, so, so let's be clear about what we need for the next one. I think from John, are, are you have you resolved in your mind the uh, the paint the that we? I don't think I have a choice. Well, well, one of the things is given if, if the technical review side says those notions are compliant with how our code well, building the building bar made a determination. Um, and after that, you're satisfied with the calculation? From a stormwater standpoint, we're <coughs> fine with it. Um, we'd like to see some details for the retaining wall. I believe so if it needs to so move a little bit to so accommodate, they have the room for it. So, so let's do this. So we need the details behind the retaining walls that our, our engineer has to review and agree to. The second thing I would like to do. Details here. Yeah, oh. well, I, I remember seeing those.
All right, so so we have some work to do on on the, on the engineering design for the water <coughs> and the location. The second thing, what I'd like to do is have you run the calculations that demonstrate. So we have a document that supports the building inspector's decision regarding the uh, the ratio of. Are they all here? All the calculations are here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Here. So, Joe, are you good with that? Yeah, like I said, we, we saw the calculations. We agree with the, the numbers. Okay. Um, so you agree with the numbers based upon the uh, village's decision? Correct. Okay. That, I just wanted to make sure of that. So, okay. So really what we need is the retaining wall, the elevations, and, and some detail on the screening for the buffers that you're going to have. Okay. okay. And the council... Yeah, un under uh, 122.3, which is the excavation, uh, it requires a sketch map sufficient to identify the property shall further indicate the present grade, the change proposed, and the grade after the work has been completed, and shall show the approximate grades of all adjacent properties for an area large enough so as to reasonably determine the effect of such changes in grade upon these areas. Well, so these are existing grades on, on this um indicated dash dash line because um, okay. our grades are all in here indicated in, in, a, in a solid line so everything is more okay. so, so Joe you, you'll check that box too right so yeah, I see the plan has that information okay they have the no, adjacent have properties to, too they do they extend yeah. off site yeah so basically we'll, we'll move I'll move the retaining wall to no, clear. I don't think you have to move anything. I think you just got to demonstrate that you can do what you say you can do. Drainage tree. Right. Yeah, I think that's whatever you, you know. All right. Let's get it documented so we can have a one spot. All right, so we'll adjourn this. Thank you. Okay. okay. 63 South Island Avenue. Uh, we're going to adding two parking spaces in the front yard of an existing two-family residence to accommodate the conversion of the existing basement into a studio dwelling. <coughs> this would render the property a multi-family use requiring conditional use permit. The application also requires review under 122-UC <coughs> soil removal and filling. Okay. Good evening. Steven Bassini, the uh, architect for the applicant. To give my limited capacity here, I'll do my best to point things out. Do um, you want me to put the drawing up or return to some of Okay. So we are here tonight for, as you mentioned, uh, conditional use permits for the uh, basement apartment to convert an existing basement in a uh, existing legal two family residence into a uh, studio apartment, which would then render the the house, uh, the, the residence, a multifamily, which requires a conditional permit from the PO district. Uh, we were also required to get a variance for the parking in the front, as well as other area variances that were pre-existing. We went to the zoning board after we had come to before you. We got to the zoning board a few months back and were granted those variances, uh, pre-existing variances, and also the variance for the parking on two conditions, two terms. One was to Prove that to the building inspector that we could develop the basement into a legal apartment with uh, conforming to the applicable codes, uh, the New York State building codes. And the second one was to get, a, obviously, approval by this board. It was conditioned uh, on your approval. Uh, we met with the building inspector and the planner and the engineer, and we had uh, uh, shown a sketch diagram of the uh, apartment. And I believe it may have been issued, this board may have been issued a letter from the building inspector. Um, stating that uh, it, it met the criteria for the building codes and that that would not be an issue. So I believe that was the first condition. Obviously, the second condition is what I'm here now to discuss uh, is your approval. Um, there was some confusion, I think, at the last meeting uh, that I came before you was whether or not basement apartments were allowed in the PO district because there's actually another district where they're not allowed. They specifically are called out that way. The NC1 neighborhood commercial and NC2 neighborhood commercial 2 districts uh, specifically say they are not allowed and they're uh, not allowed to have any apartments below the ground floor level of the retail space. In the PO district, there is no such criteria, there's no such restriction for it. Um, I think that I did some analysis into it, and I think 
basically, you know, you've got your NC ones and NC twos up here, where you've got 7-Eleven and your DD Diner, DD's Diner, and things like that. I think those are that was intended. In fact, the description says it was intended to create a convenient area where neighborhood people can come and do their, their errands. Um, that is why I don't believe they want residential down below because they want retail. That's the whole idea of that zone. In the PO district, and again, my, my, my research, I believe there's only one, and it's right <coughs> here uh, in this area. It contains 40 lots. Uh, it's the only PO district design there, and I think it was created for that area because there are some houses there with some historical uh, you know, appearances and designs, Victorian, uh, specifically the, the applicant's house. And I think that it says in there that they don't want to, they want to create a balance between the businesses that are allowed in there and the residences that are allowed in there without deterring and taking away from the character of some of those buildings in there. Um, that, which is why you are allowed to have basement apartments as long as obviously the sport feels it's not taking away from the character of the building in the neighborhood. Um, as you look on here, I'm going to the mic because I think it's relevant. I created some charts for the zoning board to go through and, and show precedence for, um, for neighborhood parking in the front yard. Um, and at the same time, I created a map, which they didn't see, but this is the one more detailed for you guys, uh, showing the PO district and then where there are multifamily and where there are also basement apartments. There are 40 lots. First of all, the applicant's property is right here on the east side. Uh, there are 40 lots in the PO district. 12 of those lots are legal multifamily, according to building farm records and assessor's records. Uh, those are shown in yellow, uh, and they're also shown with M to designate the multifamily. And then there are one, two, three, four, five of those multifamily that have legal basement apartments. So out of the 40 lots in here, 30% of the lots uh, in this area are, are legal multifamily. And out of those that are legal multifamily, uh, 60, I think it's 61% I calculated. Uh, four, I'm sorry, I take that. 42% of those uh, are, they have basement apartments. Um, you know, this zone, again, th this house here is on the uh, uphill side. Uh, there are a lot of houses along this area, and you can see one right next door specifically is multifamily. These are multifamily. That is, has a basement apartment. A few, a few houses away has a multifamily basement apartment. It's not out of the character. In fact, I can't even say that this is on the end of the PO district, and maybe it's too close to another district where it may affect. I mean, it's dead center in the middle of the district. I really think that um, it was, you know, the intention of the code to allow these residences in there uh, because it's in such a great spot uh, to have, uh, you know, to close to businesses and, um, and again, to maintain the character. Uh, the parking would not be an issue. We would not be burdening the uh, street parking, the off-street parking over here, and that was really the purpose of the application was not to burden that, to get the parking on site. Um, we convinced the, you know, the ZBA, and, uh, and I think it's a good application that we're, we're putting a retaining wall up. We're actually carving out of this front hillside here uh, and putting a retaining wall around this in the C shape uh, so that actually from the street, you're going to be blocking about three and a half feet higher that car uh, from, from Main Street um, by the actual existing land. We're leaving that there. <coughs> so really, you know, the impact on the street and the impact on the house is, is almost zero. There is an entrance right in here underneath this porch that goes into the uh, the basement apartment that would be uh, lengthened a little bit. It's, only, it's a little bit short, so a foot and a half sh uh, short of the clearance or head clearance. So we're basically carving out this land right here and putting two steps down, and that's how we're accessing the basement apartment. Uh, there's also a set of stairs from the existing residence on the ground floor down to that apartment. So we meet those criteria without impacting the appearance of this house, which again, I believe was part of the criteria in the PO district not to impacted. I'm sorry, so you shared the steps on the photo. On the site plan, can you share approximately? Sure. Right in underneath here. It's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to see. Right around the edge of this curve, there's an mm -hmm. opening right here. And that comes underneath this porch, uh, underneath the porch here, and goes into the front entrance. Plus, right here, there's a set of stairs from inside this ground floor that goes down to the apartment as well. Now, um, you, you, you said, um, because typically, um, um, ZBA doesn't like uh, parking in front of um, houses and buildings and such. Did, now, did you say that you're going to put a wall up so that this wall actually it's going to be in the ground. You're not going to see the wall either. So I'm sorry if I misled you. This right here, as you see, this property slopes up. Um, mm -hmm. sorry, the bottom picture is cut up. Basically, it slopes up. You know those properties right along the east side. I know we there about. it is. So it comes down here. The first few feet of this actually is the right of way, mm -hmm. and then in another, you know, I think we're going in about three feet here and about five five feet here. Um, so the right-of-way actually comes out to where this buttress ends. Mm -hmm. So you've got all this property and then our property that's sloping up. And then we're basically cutting right in <laughs> in the sea, taking out the earth, filling in, infilling a wall flush with the top of the soil. 
so you won't see the wall either. You're going to be see the ground, the, the, the ground slope up, and then the top of a car, like the middle of the window up to the top, right in here, pulled into those two Should spots. Is there any fence around that? It would, no, we don't want to really, that's the thing, we don't want to call any more attention to it. It's going to be the earth protecting it, I mean, screening it. Well, no, 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 I'm just thinking about people falling in. Mm. Oh, it's, a, it's going to be four feet high, mm -hmm. four to four and a half feet high. I mean, this, this right here, the, a lot of the, 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 the walkway, the stairs out here are almost as high as that. So the ZBA granted the, the uh, relief for front yard parking? Directly in front of the residence. Okay. Can you scroll up so that I can see the back? Back, no. back of the property? Uh, anyway, there. So you've got a four-car garage today? No, two-car garage here. Existing and two car garage, and this is, these are just two spots. I just I squared them out to show where so, they are. So there's two. So you got four parking spaces now, and you need six. Six technically for the, another residence, for three residences, correct? There was question about doing tandem in the back and trying to pack them. It just, it, you know, we went through with the engineer and the building inspector, and it just wasn't working code wise and uh, and just access sensible. Uh, let's try and get those back there. So where are the other two? The proposed two are here. There's two here outside, and there's two inside the garage. And this is a shared driveway. Oh, oh, you would so, not be so you share that driveway, so you can't? Can't. So you couldn't tuck a car? You couldn't put it up against this building, no. The property line is right here. Okay. In fact, there's a whole thing about this driveway. We're really trying to avoid anything with this because they don't really technically have egress here. They have 7.9 feet here. They don't really have enough to get a car through. They do. But they actually have an easement from two houses over that comes through here, and that's technically their access easement for that multifamily unit. Okay. So we really want to do just avoid that. In fact, we're also, one of the, um, the neighbors came out, I think, to the ZBA meeting was questioning whether we're backing out to High Street. Obviously, we wouldn't want to do that anyway because it's too dangerous or probably illegal. But uh, we were not. We're backing basically into the driveway and then out on top, pulling out straight onto High Street. So. <coughs> you see, you think that there's a danger aspect. All right. So the the notion here is how visually, how can the parking be as sensitive as possible? The carved out parking ball. And. Um, <coughs> I mean, just on the surface, you're very tight to that uh, curved corner element on the porch. Um, it's tough to tell how tight if there is. It looks like there's some about some lawn feet. area between the. Not enough to really walk around. No, but there's access from the porch all the way around. This is wrap around, so you can right. come out here or walk around and say, you know. Cutting yourself off. Well, I, yes. and, and I'm not suggesting it, the, the, the idea of walking around it. I'm just, it, it, yes. that's going to be the the biggest single visual impact, right? Is that the, the, the wall next to that really signature porch on a signature house. So, what what is the material of the wall, of the retaining wall? It, it, the proposal is to do it out of rubble, is to do stones, stacked okay. stone wall, not dry, probably. Well, that's better news. So it's not some modern, modern precast no, geo block the character wall. Of the neighborhood. I mean, no, there's one up the street that's a concrete block stucco. I think, and no, that's not really our intention. And the horizontal surface, horizontal surface would be paved. Uh, actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm so sorry. Uh, we're doing. Um, I thought we said we're doing, we're doing pavers. I take that back. There was a coverage. I mean, a coverage area issue. So we're doing that pavers on that. So in the photograph, the driveway appears to be asphalt. It is? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so there are other buildings in the neighborhood with parking in the front yard? There are. And in fact, I'm sorry, are my pictures from the, the planning board? No, but we can go right to Google Earth and look. But yeah, but I had, I had actual pictures, um, and uh, they may not have been in this in the middle. Okay. Um, once you can actually see on, on that map, it's well. yeah, certainly going to impact the look of that house. Right. There's there, no escaping. There are, let me tell you exactly where the most where the basement parking is. Yeah. Also do the basements. Parking in the front yard. We've actually got all of these lots here. 56 through 46. All of these have parking in the front yard. 
uh, you have 63 actually right to, I'm sorry, not 63, 90, 92, and 97 as well. These lots down here all have parking in the front yards. It is unique, to be honest, it's unique on the east side of the road, um, but also as far as the impact on the east side of the road, and I made this point with some pictures to, uh, I thought I had presented, but this property right here um, has a, uh, a red, reddish um, terracotta sort of retaining wall that's about two feet high around all sides. This corner lot comes here, runs along the whole side there with a fence on top of that. I'm not even sure for what. It's not holding anything in. I think it's more just an appearance or maybe trying to privacy thing. That impact, I think, on that corner alone, as far as the aesthetics, really is, is detrimental to the character of the neighborhood. And then as you go up uh, South Highland, another... Uh, I'm sorry, say that again, that, that impact alone is what? Detrimental to the character of the neighborhood, I believe. As far as, you know, talking about keeping the aesthetics of it, it's a, it's a reddish colored retaining wall. It's not, it's a garden wall, essentially, with a retaining, with a fence on top of it. But you're not suggesting that's the bar. That we're I'm suggesting that we're trying to be better than that because, okay. and then as you go up the street, as you know, they've got that uh, Ready Rock or, or, or almost Mafia Bob, but I think it's a Ready Rock wall that is 12 feet high as you get up towards the church and the school in that area. We are down that same type of a hillside, but we're essentially doing a stone wall cut into the landscape no, without anything sticking I, and up. I, no, I'm saying it's, as far as. And I, and I, and I think the, the, the natural stone wall is good news, and I, I, I think the fact that. that your supposition that the grade is going to conceal, I, I think there's a, there's a valid notion there. <clears throat> I think the wall within eight or nine inches of that curved portion of the porch is what will look, what is kind of a head scratcher. Right? It's a little further than that, but I understand what you're saying, yes. It's, a foot, it's about a foot and a half to two feet. Will it stop traffic? Feet. No. No. Well, it's you actually when the car's parked. And you probably won't see it. You won't see the cars parked there. And you won't really see it coming south. And you won't see it across the street. You'll see it coming north I as you pass the other two houses. And that's it. Vegetation on that hillside help? It might. Um, and, you know, I. Some plant things on that well, slope. That's what I was thinking. Is if you put something across the front. Or a vine up against the house that kind of laps over the wall. I, but that, listen, you guys, if the owner cares about this, he'll figure that out. I, I, I mean, I think we are where we are in this. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's much. Except I do, I do think, I, and I don't know, I'm trying to envision in my head uh, some kind of screening across the front where it runs across the steps, you know, the top mm -hmm. of the steps. The only, yeah, the only thing is, and again, and I appreciate those Down feedback. Front. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is is really not screening the house. I would agree. We, we, you know, the porch is beautiful, and we're trying to drop it in yeah, to avoid yeah. that. Screen. But you're gonna you're gonna lose that when you park the car. You sure? Well, you bet. Well, you still, I mean, the porch is beautiful, and right. it's gonna ruin the look of it. So uh, the question is, what would it look like if you roughed in some uh, privet edges, low privet edges, or something in the front? Out by the property line. Out by a property line. In this area. It's a natural growth. And you know, it, it, it's gonna. But I mean, I think nobody's gonna see the hole that you dig, right? What people are gonna see is the rooftops of the cars. cars. And so Which is my concern. That you can screen that. You know, seems you know like if it were uh, boxwood or something that takes forever to grow, but they they stay low. Um, it it would add some greenery to that front as well. And not take away from the porch. I think low low lying one, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, you're, you're right. Low lying one, 18 inch, three quarter inch box with something like that. I think yeah. would go a long way, and and the board is open for that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, mean, I, I don't convince the client of that. Yes. I, I don't. Since the board of zoning appeals granted the the variance. Well, let me just make sure that we all understand. This is, this is one of those things that intuitively you would say, let's get the apartment first, one way or the other, and then determine parking spaces. Unfortunately, with the code, when you have both a request for a variance and a site plan approval type of situation, it says that you have to go to the zoning board first, get those approvals, and come back to you. It's sort of the tail wagging the dog in some sense. Um, but what they've said is conditionally, if this board determines that <coughs> it's sufficient in terms of room and, and code and that type of thing to have the apartment there, then he can have the parking space. <coughs> if he didn't get the parking space, then he couldn't even come to you. Well, yeah, but, but I think that we've, we've, we've demonstrated that the apartment is allowed, it's 
right? And so now that we've decided there's a parking, there's, there's an apartment that requires parking, and the code says we need to have two parking spaces, regardless of the size of your apartment, mm -hmm. we have to come up with it, mm -hmm. right? The ideal situation would be is to say, wait and see. But, but then that becomes an enforcement issue for the building department later on. So we can't, the, the board that has the ability to vary has already done, said, okay, we need, you've got the part. We, we agree that it's your hardship. Um, <coughs> so I think we're beyond that. So the best we can do now is figure out how to screen it. How, right, how to make it as sensitive as it can be. Um, okay, so how do you feel about that? I, like I said, I think the box is how really really nice. Well, I mean, that's why I brought the issue up. Good. So. Uh, I think that if we minimize the height of 18 to 24 maximum growth, <coughs> thing. yeah, you don't want to you don't want to block the house, right? right? But what you want to be able to do yes. is block the car, right? right. That, because you're right. The, 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 we, we realize the mistakes that exist on the west side of, of South Island Avenue. Hmm. We I see no good reason to encourage that to continue on the other side. Yes, I agree. Because if we had our way, they wouldn't exist there either. <laughs> Where would the roof of the car be against the height of that porch? Uh, the roof would probably be about the second, uh, the second, second row course of, of the bus right here. Yeah. Yeah. But also forward. So at every inch you're going forward, you're coming down an inch. So, so I think short, short will make them disappear. You don't have to be very high to do what Yeah, a row, a row of box moves along there would, would, would help it. Because you're also down, your, your mm -hmm. viewport here is, is a little higher. It's, it's a Google Earth because it's probably a camera mounted on the top of a car. I mean, you're, you're down here, they're a little lower in your perspective. Okay, good. Any questions from the board? No. No? Any questions from the public regarding this? No. Are, are we, we good? Are, are we going to talk about the apartment aspect too, or? Well, I mean, as I understand it, you've, you that's conditional. you've done right. your homework in terms of <coughs> the zone, the various zones, um, and when they are allowed and what the trigger points are for them not being allowed, and the fact that this zone doesn't have either of those. Right. And so, I look to this side of the table and say, <coughs> thumbs up, concur, or not so fast? Well, I think the fact that, that since the code in this area is silent, it I prohibit. I would tend to agree, but I it's not a, it's a mistake, but it exists. I think the other question though is is it really you know I mean I'm 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 not sure I you know it's a very interesting indoor apartment because there's really no outside awareness. That lattice sort of shelters everything. Yeah, I and I'm not so sure I understand the explanation of how you're getting in the apartment, but I feel that that's a building, that's between the applicant and the building department at that point, if, if you're complying with state building the, code further. The biggest question was about egress, and we, we vetted that as far as we have the height, the width, and things like that, and direct access to a, 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 a location area, which we do, and you know, we agree. I think there was some discussion before the zoning board about windows and, and light and those things and and my understanding at the zoning the zoning board testimony was that the building department has determined that there <coughs> is Opportunity. that it meets the code and and i didn't quite understand but you can apparently put a window in one place and if the light shines through that can count as shared uh, light light in exactly right. and, and it's, it's still just from the state building code so yeah it's, it's not going to be a pleasant and the, the, and, it, and they're going to still they're going to still meet the two um, um, measures of uh, egress out. There's only actually the one required from the basement unit department. The one we need to be. If we actually will have two, and we'll have an emergency escape as well. I thought there's two for every good, but I know. Okay. If this is part of the unit above or something like that, but it, no, it's, it's an individual unit and it has it's egress out the front and also egress in the front. Okay. Right. I mean, could we? I mean, just a thought here. I mean, you know, this constant need for affordable units always comes up. I mean, is there a way that we could maybe consider that here? Is there some sort of a it's it's under condition? Six. Or it's under 16. There six. would be optional. Yeah, it would probably go along with yeah. kind of selling me on this. Well, I think, I think the market's going to prevail on what you can 
get, you can get for this unit. Yeah. Essentially sell it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be affordable by by definition. By market, I don't know, so to speak. Yeah. I would say. I, I, it and seems like a lot of <laughs> no. not affordable by market. Well, I'm only asking this well, because this photograph continues to stare back at me. Well, I look. Does your did the applicant build the garage that's on the right hand side of that? No, that was there. So that was part of the pre-existing zoning issue. Is it was built too close to the property line. It was pre -day. and too high. I think you know. I, you, oh, this, this is this is a no. <laughs> there is nothing compliant about that garage. Well, it's not just that. Okay, we, we can ramble on here all day. <coughs> Um, so I, I think we've exhausted our discussion about this with the addition of low uh, evergreen shrubbery uh, to the front of the building. Is That's there a, a condition at the moment? That's a condition. You say the front of the building. Just so oh, like front of, front, front, on the property. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Do you want it yeah. only on the bottom of the C or do you want it across the top of well, the Well, I think C. you're going to have to make it. Well, I don't think. I think you say minimally along following the, the what, what, that would be the west wall of the yeah right of the parking you'll the have parking to, area. You'll have to decide what how best should it should it be symmetrical on each side of the side or right. on, on That's the entrance. Good point. So I mean I think you got to think about it from how it's going to look. It can't, it can't be just you know a row lipstick yeah, right an L shaped row. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that the, the 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 main objective here is to give that. Uh, those cars, you don't want to see the rooftops or anything, so that's why we're doing that. So I, want to, I, want to, I want to make sure that we understand that. It softens the impact. It softens the impact. And you still keep, and you still keep the visual of of, of the nice porch. porch yeah. stuff. It's not yeah, going to, but but we don't want to see rooftop cars. So, so on that, street. you um, move to. Roof? I will with the okay. with those conditions. Okay. Yes. And it's a second. All second. Barbara second. All in favor. Aye. 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 No, 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 no. The only condition, right? Michael's a no. No, no. Michael's a no. Michael's a no. Michael's a no. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see all the no's. Are we, are we good? So okay. Everyone else You're good. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Everybody, Everybody else. Is else is yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Run quick. I appreciate no. your time. Thanks okay. for having <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Happy holidays. 55 yes, North you. Malcolm Street. <laughs> Victoria Home. Fire chief and the assistant. Uh, basically, uh, we reviewed the fire access plan with them. They had 
overall, they were uh, fine with uh, what we proposed. They made some suggestions. And so your comments, you or, 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 or Joe's concern in being able to, to uh, K back out of that loop, particularly going behind the, the project. All right, so uh, th their comments starting from this end of the site. We originally had the fire hydrant here in the island. Um, they asked us to move it off the uh, off to the other side, which we we've placed it here. Um, they would either use, they would not use both hydrants. There's one in the in North Malcolm. They would either use they would use one or the other, and most likely they said they would they would take the one in North Malcolm first. <coughs> um, uh, they asked that we make this half of the island uh, mountable curb and pavers in case they really need to swing a Y turn and whatnot. It, it makes that easy for them. Uh, we went over this this K turn here, which they were good with that, and they asked us to delineate the path of the uh, fire truck lane. Uh, with evergreens or some type of shrub so if there's snow cover they know they can guide themselves between the uh, uh, between the uh, 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 whatever plantings we have there uh, instead of something like a stake or something that's, that's a little more uh, not as uh, a little more well, this is a little less obvious and, and, and can fit into the landscaping of the site so um, that then we took this uh, uh, path for the the, uh, access, the fire access path, and we extended it a little closer to this corner of the building here. So uh, that that addresses the side of the site here. On this side of the site, uh, they they asked us <coughs> to flare out this the west side of the entrance, which we did. And uh, again, this shows the movement. We told them that we you know. Uh, we're able to get them up into the uh, service area, which they were fine with. Originally, they were hoping to get down in here with the fire truck, but this is a better situation for them. Um, and again, we show the turning paths for the uh, vehicles, as you had requested um, at the last meeting. Uh, and the last thing they had asked for was they want to be involved in the design process for the building itself to make sure um, they're uh, <coughs> they're involved in with where uh, panels are going and alarms and lock boxes, stamp pipes and other things. So they want to be uh, in on the ground floor of, that, of the, des the final design process for the internal part of the building. Did I miss anything, Lynn? No. The only other thing was if this board grants approval at some future time, that there's just a condition added that the applicant needs to maintain access at all times for fire trucks or emergency vehicles. But that's a leader. Which we demonstrated the last time we bought the Okay. In, in connection with that, the document you have before you, we've been prepared the negative declaration. Page five is really after all the preambles and the required uh, descriptions of actions and, and, and documents that are part of the application. There are the reasons uh, supporting the determination of, of, of negative declaration. Uh, it talks about lesser impacts as a result of this 90 bed versus the 120 bed expansion project. It's going to be one building with two wings as opposed to two buildings, four buildings under the original facility design. Uh, the amount of cut and fill is far less uh, than in the previous approved uh, plan, which is better for the environment, and it reduces the construction time down to one and a half years, reducing traffic and congestion and construction activities, which will be better for the residents. Um, number of variances have, has decreased from eight in, um, in total category to six. Uh, but however, if you look, if you break that down further, you'll see that the number of spaces where those variances uh, were applied have been, I think, dramatically decreased. Uh, traffic generated by the 90-bed facility it will be less than that that was analyzed for, for previous uh, the previous uh, project. Uh, traffic will be reduced. Um, the demands for given the size and the reduction down to 90 beds, water supply demand and wastewater uh, treatment will be less, along with the reduction in the amount of energy and natural gas demanded by the redesigned facility. 
waste generation and handling uh, with the implementation of a facility-wide recycling program will generate less waste uh, requiring less on-site handling and pickup frequencies. Um, we've, we've already gone over with you the construction phasing uh, that they anticipate doing as well as uh, how they plan on allowing for both the, the um, parking of construction vehicles and maintenance of the on-site um, facilities with without displacing the residents, which was first and foremost in, in any any redesign of this uh, facility. On, on page six, there is a typo. Um, on number four, uh, obviously it's supposed to be the original 120 bed facility, not 12 bed facility. Uh, but as you can see, number three, uh, just as in the last application, um, we're going to, uh, we're committed to wherever possible having adapted reuse of the historical elements. Um, we're going to allow the historical society, except they want you to come and do any type of, of, of videography of the existing building before demolition. And uh, it will be offered to uh, the historical society for the benefit of the village. Any any artifacts they deem significant in historical <coughs> nature that are not able to be reused in this project. Um, <coughs> the, the way it's been redesigned and moved and located, uh, th this one building in the site, I th you know we think is uh, when we have it part of your findings. So I hope you think so as well, is, is probably the best location. It's under their concept of what they call design with nature to mitigate the overall scale and mass of the building, uh, as well as provide a sense of openness both on site and within the immediately surrounding community. Um, we think that we presented a landscaping plan, at least, you know, preliminarily that, that really is, is robust and is well organized and, and provides a, a visually pleasant uh, accent to, to the site itself, to the project itself. Uh, in light of the facility size recommend, recommended by the Department of Health, the 90 bed redesigned facility uh, represents a, a suitable alternative uh, to what was previously proposed and what could be, obviously what could be on the project, 120 bed, but they are in fact limited by the state of New York uh, to this 90 bed proposal. Um, and based upon the fact that the 120 bed uh, project, which now I, I believe was generated, has this proposal has uh, less environmental impact. So the, the, the past proposal was, was copiously studied uh, under CEQA uh, and, and adopted. Um, the Environmental Advisory Council for the Village uh, reviewed the documents during their October 3rd, 2017 board meeting and I believe you know issued to this board a, a, a good finding that they're uh, in favor and have no objections to this, to this project. Um, so we'll pre present this to you, hopefully for you to uh, review and adopt. Uh, we wanted to talk about well, whether you had any further questions, because other than what we showed you in the fire, there's nothing programmatic uh, that we have to add since our last meeting, where I think I came away with the impression that you were satisfied with where we ended up with this project. Um, my questions concern more timing. I was under, under the impression that, that perhaps you'd be adopting findings at this meeting, but in any event, sending us back to the zoning board for January to get uh, <coughs> what we hope would be um, you know, final approvals from them, which will then be, like last time, subject to the planning board site plan approval for this project. Okay. Any comments from the staff? No. Yeah. So, so in light of the fact that we now receive a final document, I'd ask the board to take it and review it. And, and be prepared to, uh, based upon the Board of Zoning. I don't think we have any objection with, with telling you to go and see the Board of Zoning. Do we need anything from you, though, to allow the Zoning Board to actually issue their, uh, to approve their variances? I see Mark the, uh, need, the chicken yes. You need the, you need the <laughs> secret statement of findings to be adopted since you're the lead agency before they can go forward and make a determination on the variances. The variances are lesser, uh, as Mr. Venditti said, the variances are lesser, and I would expect having uh, been granted for uh, greater uh, variances for the 120 bed uh, structures that they would probably do that. But they need, in essence, what they'll do is they'll review your findings and more than likely adopt them as their own, which would allow them to act. So the, this is? The That's the statement of findings, right? 
I just got this. Right. It's not happening tonight. Right. Okay. Let's see it differently. Well, I, you know, I, I, given your overview, and as, as fast as I could follow your overview We're just kind of with the written forward. document, uh, you were on a 5K sprint there at one point. Um, I'm reasonably comfortable. It is peculiar, I think, to have this document now and not at least have everybody read it calmly. Well, I think the idea was it's a draft. If you were comfortable, fine. If, if you weren't comfortable, obviously, you can take a look at the draft and, and at the next meeting uh, provide edits. Um, but we can't act on a draft. You could. You could if you don't have any changes to it, you could adopt it. Other than the typo, I did point out. I saw have to be. One point. I understand. We, I feel like we have to read for 20 minutes. Bart, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. But, you know, I don't, but I don't. Maybe peculiar was the wrong way. No. And, and, and we did, and, and, I, and I wish we had had it earlier. I know that our environmental consultant was working on it diligently and, and had some passes back and forth. And then I think it was a couple of days ago, submitted the, the final uh, version to the, to the village. I'd also be, you know, quite pleased and happy if, if you wanted to. Uh, you know, send us on our way and, and take some action on it. At, at the end of the meeting, we maybe have time to, to look at it a little bit more. I do think that the salient, the salient uh, provisions are on page five and six, which is the reasoning supporting basically the finding of the negative declaration. So I think to that extent, it's, it's, it's uh, two pages and a half or two pages. Is there anything that is, um, 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 for lack of a better word, glaring about this document that we have not heard of previous to this? Because we've had several discussions about this. And I realize you say, you indicate that page five and six are kind of the main yeah. thing with it. I, I believe, and I'll defer also to, to Lynn and, and the village, I believe much of this, while diligently drafted by our environmental consultant, much of this comes from documents previously, you know, given to the board in terms of their his prior, uh, number one, the letter from the Department of Health, and his prior comparison, which I know he's given to you on numerous occasions, uh, the last thick part of this, the comparison of environmental impact, which is something that Mr. Russo had, had prepared at, at any meeting where there was a change in those impacts. So with the table. So my my feeling is that you have seen probably 90% of this document before. So the quick answer is no. Quick answer is no, I do not believe that. <laughs> no, I know Dave. <laughs> okay. So I don't I don't know how to get you to the Board of Zoning Appeals in January based upon us receiving this now and not Taking the opportunity to read it, um, is there any possibility without uh, in, imposing on you that before the January ZBA having a you know very 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 short special meeting uh, is that something that would be? And I only ask John. I only ask because you know we have also the, our our overarching gun again <laughs> to our head by the by the conditions imposed of being in the ground by uh, July first by the Department of Health. The ZBA moves their meeting up. That's mm -hmm. the My meeting on the 9th of yeah. January. So there's like. Okay, my house. <laughs> <laughs> and staff, staff received their draft on Thursday, on um, late Thursday, and uh, we had minor comments and changes that came. Um, but most of the stuff came out of the three documents that they updated. I wouldn't use the words cut and paste, but most of it is where they, where they indicate that comparison of the... Let me just ask this, and I'm, at, I'm looking at Mark, and I'm saying if there's the technical... For the last time you're looking at Mark. You're right, and I'm going to get every bit of it out of, out of, out of these moments, right? The, there is the 
legal, technical, procedural component to this. And then there's, for lack of a better way to characterize it, there are the optics of, of moving on a document that's a neg deck type document in this procedural, in this procedure of I don't know how many months now, but more than three or four. Since months. September, I think. Right. August or September. Aren't are, are okay. they the same? August. Okay. The legal process and the optics are the same. If we do one thing, if we, if we do what we all would like to do. Well, they certainly are very intertwined. We can't, no. but, I don't, but I don't know that it's a way to, I mean. What I could say that I do think at the last meeting, unless I, I could have misconstrued it, is that I believe the board uh, expressed its comfort with, uh, with making the find, with making findings like on the idea that I so, so assume that so, you're so, satisfied. So let's pretend yeah. for a minute you're you're not the lawyer for this. Somebody else. Mm -hmm. They say, so Mr. Clark, before you voted for this, did you read this document? My answer would be uh, yes, in different forms. <laughs> it has. It was stated, this, this document has all been before you. Just tell him what he wants. There's the lawyer answer. <laughs> he wasn't advised to, to do yeah. something. But that's, I think that's why something. I did ask if you'd be willing to have a very I, short special meeting. I don't know that we can arrange that. It's certainly possible. Uh, it would be really good to be done with it before the end of the year. You'd have to advertise it. I know. We have to advertise it, but can we <coughs> advertise Before it? Before the end of the year, we need 10 days. And there's no more publications. And it is up for this year. We get advertising with our names. Because there's no, well, you're not, there's it's not, not, it's not exactly clear. You, somebody knows yes. how to do that. But mm -hmm. special meetings happen a lot, and, and it's not 10 days. We used to have our special meetings and it was a minimum of three days notice uh, unless they were have to notify, super special. You have to notify the press. Right? I think. But I'm not up on that stuff anymore. That's the job for Stuart and Mark. But, I mean, I'm, I just think we need to do it the right way. I know. I appreciate that. So if we could figure out how to do this before the end of the year, that's great. Or even before no. January 9th, or no, there are other complications yeah. with doing something. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Just so can we figure that out? Hey, Mark. Mm -hmm. This, once it's adopted, does this need to be? This needs to be noticed. I, you know, the zoning check. board prior to that notice I, I, period. The, the answer to the question is I don't know the answer to the question. Under um, 617, whatever, 13, 12, 13, I, I remember that if it is a type 1, this is an unlisted, but the type 1 in the executive has to be noticed in the EMB. Uh, there are some other circumstances in which you have to notice it in the EMB. That's the environmental notice bulletin for the state. <coughs> uh, but I don't remember if an unlisted action where you neg deck in the file was. No, this is one where you don't. Mm -hmm. you, wouldn't have, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have to be in the NB. An, un, an unlisted neg deck, unlike a type 1 neg deck, would not require a. So a that means. Listed. It doesn't have to go, it doesn't have to be published in the environmental notice bulletin. So that buys us some time. So. Where you were saying, okay. So that being said, what, what other gigs do we have to get through? Um, well, the next uh, week is, so this is Christmas. Discussion. <laughs> That's a major gig. No problem. <laughs> you just come on Christmas. Not. So then the, tw the 26th is next Tuesday. Um, I'll be in town this way next. Or the second. If it's a Tuesday night, I won't be here for you to apply to those meetings. I'm not around, so. Look, can we not have to. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. You know, I would appreciate any consideration. Yep. Really, only because of. I understand your, your position and your 
and, and what you need to do, and you understand that I'm just trying to, to, to get to a certain point for the applicant on something that I think I think, I think somebody's got to do a little homework to see what we actually can do. Okay, that, that doesn't get us in a gym. And, and I'll just, the same situation will arise if you hand this to the zoning board on the day before their meeting. <laughs> I am convinced. I won't be there, but I'm convinced that they will tell you, I'm sorry, you got to wait until February for us to do anything. So I think it has to be done so that they can have some notice of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so we can't pull it off before the end of the year. We can't pull it off. But if you can, I'll make myself available. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark. I want to thank you for your time and service. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Some question is. Does it have to be like a physical meeting? You can do like a conference call or something? I, I don't. I, Stuart, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think that latest uh, sort of opinion. Oh, here he is. I don't think our latest. I don't think our latest opinion um, um, that you sent allows multiple members of the board to be on a conference call. I think you can get away with one or so. Oh, that that most recent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. State office. Yeah, we can. What the open meeting room? If, if we get a quorum plus one, in, if we can get a quorum in person, that's with, good. With one somewhere else. And one can. somewhere else, it's still okay. Mm -hmm. But but the majority of the people will be have to be present. Okay. Well, I'll wait to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And okay. Wish you all very so, happy holidays. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Okay, so 86 South Island Avenue. Yeah, no. You guys sent them to the zoning board and they're not appearing before the zoning board before because they have not submitted a survey, so they are okay. hanging out there. 49 Spring Street. They're here. Good evening. My name is Robert Corky. I'm the attorney for 49 Spring Street. This way. Uh, J.P. Hernandez uh, is in the hospital this evening, I'm sorry to say, and not here. Oh, dear. And he has the plans and most of the information. Mm. Um, but I would like to ask, as long as we are here, and Mr. Phil is here as well, um, I asked a question last week when uh, the issue of the of the variance is, is a, or a setback of 25, at the last meeting, there was a 25-foot setback from the, from the aqueduct. Right. And I asked the question if that was a village right. rule and or something that generated from the state. Um, uh, no I, one was quite sure. No one was quite sure. I spent quite a few hours trying to research that, and I'm not quite sure. Um, but I did have the opportunity to uh, look at a lot of state records and speak with uh, Mr. Raymond Doherty. He's the manager of the park, the kind of park area as well as to Linda Cooper, the regional director, uh, whether or not the state, in fact, had any requirements for setbacks. And they did not. Uh, interestingly, I handed out a document that I, I thought was fascinating. I'm kind of interested in, a, in the aqueduct. It's a set of maps promoted by the state. I thought I had enough. Is there any extra put on the other side? Thank you. Um, I, I've been... Uh, uh, an aqueduct walker since I moved to Austin almost 40 years ago. And I was struck by the setback rule because I found that I never thought there was any continuity consistency with that. And job by chance, uh, I found this document, which is the maps of the Croton Aqueduct. It's kind of fascinating. The top sheet is just a blow up of the location where uh, the 49th Spring Street property is. Uh, it's, this maps. This series of maps takes you from the aqueduct into New York City, and it's broken down by districts. Uh, we, uh, the Austin is on section B uh, of, the, of the maps. And one of the things I, I, I just looked at, and I said, what's that little red line? And that's the front page. Because I, my conversation with Mr. Dougherty was, was there any reason uh, that there could not be excavation next to the aqueduct? Is there any problem with that? And he said, no, we don't have any issue with that. When I looked further, I saw that the Croton Aqueduct isn't there. <laughs> if you look at this map, the Croton Aqueduct veers off at Waller, upspring, to, Mount, to Maple. It's not even on the aqueduct trail in that area. So I, it's kind of fascinating. If you look at the maps, you'll see that um, 
and there's a whole history. I have another document that shows the history of it. The, the, the aqueduct was created for the topography at the time, but the trail map, the, the Croton Aqueduct Park, in fact, was done later on. And it was done to try to give a, a, a recreational area going from the city to the aqueduct. So in fact, where the property is, the Spring, Spring Street property, does not abut the Croton Aqueduct in the back. Spring Street abuts the Croton Aqueduct. The, pro <laughs> the property abuts the trail. Mm -hmm. So as to the wording of the statute and the, and the zoning code, I was again wondering, are we talking about from the trail? Are we talking from the aqueduct? It's the aqueduct. The variance issue isn't uh, something that, that we have to deal with. If it's the trail, then we have to come and deal with that. But again, uh, you guys are probably familiar with this area as well. And interestingly, Dougherty, the, the manager, he was. And he said, how come they have a gate down there? <laughs> he knew of a gate on the corner of Waller and Sprint. I said, how did you know about that? He said, it's in our records. Said, I said, who put it up? He said, not us. It's not supposed to be there. So we got into a conversation of the use of the aqueduct and what was the purpose that he thought maybe of the setbacks. Um, he couldn't come up with one. I walked it again after our last meeting. Um, if you're familiar, if you go from Maple onto the aqueduct, I, I, I'm not, I didn't take a, a reading, but it looks like the house that's on the corner of Maple and the aqueduct, that's got to be on the aqueduct. There's no setback at all. And as you go back and forth, you see that the properties, some are set back, some are right there, right to that little, that little burn. And you look the other way, which was really striking to me, the, you go across the housing, the senior housing, and they built over the aqueduct. There were trees, benches, etc. over that. So you, I see, if I go from... So let me be clear, there, there are improvements on the aqueduct, oh, I'm not, not a building. Right. I'm right. saying it's not, it's not something that does, that's left in its natural state. No. It's their improvements. Right. But it, then it, as you walk, all the way into town, you see that there's no continuity uh, with the building that's there. So I said, it looks like it's fairly arbitrary. What's there, what's not there? Was there an overall plan? I didn't see that. And I looked through town codes, village codes. I didn't see that. I didn't see a plan for the aqueduct. I know that this board's addressed the aqueduct. I think you had to do that with the Avalon project uh, and probably some other things a long time. But my question, and, and, and JB's not here, but it does impact what we present to the board in terms of the plan for the property. Will a, a setback variance be required? Even 27037 of the code has a, describes the, the, there's a there's 50, foot, 50 foot wide strip of land right. that's adjacent to both sides of the code and aqueduct, and it's regulated by various appropriate authorities. Yes. And there's a 25 foot of that 50 foot. It's immediately adjacent to the aqueduct that has to be considered as a buffer, as defined by this chapter. Um, and then um, they, it specifies that you can't have any construction, grading, excavation, or buildings permitted within these 25 foot wide areas. So I know, I, I, I was re referencing that one. <coughs> from the open. Is that? But, if the, but if the aqueduct runs up Spring Street and turns onto the maple, why does it matter? The real just, question is, is what's the story of the linear park behind it? And is that is that is there any is there any governance there that's that wouldn't that's allow this to happen? Yeah. The state is doesn't have that. Mr. I, I was very careful in asking Mr. Doherty at the state. Is there something that you have any restrictions on on the on the state property? Oh, no, 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 no. You're driving on. Essentially, what you're saying is you're driving on. If you're driving or walking, it's set as a walking. Actually, well, no, but the, the piece that goes behind Spring Street. Right? What we thought was the aqueduct, oh. you demonstrated this tonight. Yeah. That's just a linear park. Yes, it is. And that's my question. Since there's no dispute about, what, about what's on the street part. Right. Because that's obvious, right? But, but on the back, is there some who owns <coughs> that yeah. piece of linear park? The state. So they own that too. They own that. They own that strip, 26.3 miles from New York City to Croton. Oh, even though there's no aqueduct under that yes. portion. Yes. Okay. So, so 
I'm sorry. So that, so there's, and there's no restriction for the building against the park. No, they have no restrictions. Okay. All right. So and it goes, it go, it turns up Maple through the park, across Main, and then across the Dole Arch. Yep. Yeah. You and, can then, even and, then, and then continues on, and then eventually meets up with North uh, Malcolm or somewhere over you there. Can, so you can follow. You know, I, I'm very attention. familiar with yeah, yeah, it. I yeah. grew up in that area, so I'm yeah, familiar yeah. with it. So I'm, just, I'm just making sure. It was in my backyard for, for many years. I lived on Audubon, and, went, and I said, I didn't know what it was. Or just yeah. something to confirm. May I be happy to request yeah. that from them? Yeah. Uh, the reason I bring it up now, even with JB not here, is it does impact what we're going to be presenting. If what did you do to Mr. Doherty? Mr. Darden yeah. is with, they had a public meeting in Austin not that long ago in the library. He is with uh, the old quote and actual state historic park management. Mm -hmm. And Linda Cooper is the Taconic Regional uh, Director, Taconic Regional <coughs> Office. I could also send you a copy of their plan. Did you um, say Linda Cooper? Linda yep. Cooper, yeah. Taconic Regional Director. <laughs> Strasburg, New York. Mm -hmm. I, I just found it fascinating, the whole history of it and whatever. Uh, it's sort okay. of a resource that uh, I wish were developed, but I don't see, I just haven't, when I walked, I just could not see any continuity. I could not see, wait a second, if there's a plan here, where, where is it? If you could get Mr. Doherty to, to sort of acknowledge in writing both the front and the back of the door. Now we have a park behind you, and that they consider their park. Right? Yes. And the actual aqueduct is buried in under right under the street. Yeah. So let's just. It's yeah, not. It's actually that, that agency actually received a notice of this board's intent to be read on this application. So if they were to respond to that, which you know, that there's no issues with that, that would probably keep it all in. That'd be great. Thank you. It's it is a fascinating. I will send the board copies of this. But they don't respond at all. Is that considered no response? <laughs> well, they okay. I think respond. you need more than just them saying that you can act. You, we're not objecting to you acting as lead agency. No. I think you need something that, that gives their interpretation of what the aqueduct is and what that park is and who's on it. I think that that's what I was getting at. Something that, that delineates what what their role is. Right, but are. if they respond on the your notice that you want to be lead, that information. Well, I'm saying so they can condense it into right. one document. All right. Well, somebody apparently got a hold of their hand on this. Great job. Okay. JB, okay. 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 I'm just listening. No, it's JB. Oh, JB. Okay. Oh, JB. Oh, I'm glad to hear you. Okay. Was that? No, JB is uh, he got a, a knee operation, and somehow doctors found some oxygen on that level, and. Uh, you start to get a little effect to the heart, so you be careful. The doctor not allow him to go out of the hospital until probably Thursday. That's all they answer. Give him like minutes ago. Yeah. You come from one thing and come up another, so that's always something. So okay. I hope you be okay in a few days. Yes, me too. Good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have Thank a good you. holiday, everyone. Happy holiday. holidays for everybody. You too. Say hello to JB for us. Okay, so we don't have 173 tonight. Oh, I know. JB's not here. Mr. Sausalino's not here. You're not here representing 173 North Island? No? Okay. That would explain why we haven't received a general letter. He's in the hospital. Adjourned 35 Croton Avenue. So 35 Croton Avenue submitted um, revised information yesterday at 3.30. So we haven't done a full analysis of anything they submitted. I mean, they were told the deadline was November 27th to submit. Just a little late. So, yeah. <laughs> it was just the, the next calculations deadline. that you requested last time. We didn't get access to the building. I, well, 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 there's more than that, because this had to do with the parking that required was running concurrently with whatever the use was going to be. We, we have that. We calculated all of that. It's not a calculation. 
it's a letter of the, of the, that, that, that outlines that since you don't have the appropriate, I'm presuming you don't have the appropriate parking on your lot, or do you now think you do? We'll be renting six so, and, 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 and according to our <coughs> planner last month, she said that whatever lease you're going to arrange for <coughs> needs to be concurrent with the use that you're proposing. So that means you need to bring documentation to the planning department that says that the locations of these parking spaces are under long-term agreements with the owners that they can be used for this use that you're proposing, number one, and number two, that by providing those parking spaces to you for use, you don't make those existing facilities non-conforming. We have was, that old tabulated. It's, no, you do, do you have you have written statements from the owners of those properties that said that they are willing to lease to you the parking spaces that are you required for those uses. We have leases, yes. On a long term basis. And you and you and you have the calculations that say that by them leasing these spaces to you, they still remain conforming Correct. to their uses. We have that. Then that's what my board, has, my our staff has to review, right? and we're not going to get that done tonight. I don't think. I mean, do you want to? I mean, we're not going to decide anything tonight. That's for sure. Have you looked at this, submitted? No. Just briefly, it just it came in three thirty <coughs> in the afternoon. Yeah, they haven't even had a chance to. <coughs> none of us. Not just none of us. Have, right. right. So, so I think it's a moot point for listening to anything. I think submit it to the board, to the to the staff. They'll review it, and we'll hear it next month. <coughs> we did submit it, so. But at three thirty today. Right. At three thirty. So nobody we didn't get access to the building. Well, it doesn't so. matter why yeah. they didn't get it until yesterday. So, so, so yesterday. unfortunately, we have to adjourn. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving along. One ninety one enterprises. Applicant is seeking to increase customer and ADA parking at DD's diner, along with the installation of a retaining wall. What do you Good evening. My name is uh, Tim Gibbons with Gibbons Engineering, and I'm representing uh, the applicant for uh, this project. Um, what we wanted to propose at this site is to uh, extend this parking area here and create uh, additional spots. Um, in order to do that, this project will require a retaining wall about 17 and a half feet in height at the rear yard. And uh, in doing that, we'll, we'll create a level uh, area for the spaces in the back. 17 and a half feet from the ground up? Yes, sir. Wow. Let me see if I can show you that. Actually, the no. definition of a building uh, excludes walls that are used for retaining. Yeah. Oh, retaining walls. And that height would be okay? If designed properly, yeah. Um, I, well, I, I don't know if it, it was defined as a building, but I think over six feet it had to, it had to adhere to set. Well, so, so the building set is a buffer in yeah. bulk zoning. So the the, um, the bulk maybe, zoning. Maybe not in this zone. No, in this yeah. zone, the, there's a, a buffer required, uh, a screening buffer, to refer to in, in your bulk zoning regulations, yeah. and it's a 15 foot minimum dimension. The the wall itself doesn't meet the definition of the building, <coughs> so the buffer, but there is a buffer set back there. It looks like it needs to adhere to. They do not. They don't need to. So they need to vary. 
Yes, in the end, I'll be uh, advising the board that we'll need a two-foot uh, setback for not meeting the minimum parking or loading uh, setback from a property line on the street. So in the rear, we're proposing three, and I believe the zone requires five. So we'll, we'll be requesting a two-foot setback. <coughs> That's, I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead. And then the, the other variance will be we have too much uh, impervious surface. The zone does allow for 80%. We have about 75.55% now. And we're looking uh, <coughs> to go close to nearly 100% with the parking. It's going to come out to be 97.09%. So those are two variances that we'll have to pursue. Um, and then come back to the uh, and we're, we're discussing a third with the required buffer, the 15-foot buffer. Okay. That would be from the property line to the base of the wall. 15-foot, did you say? Mm -hmm. kind of room, do you? We have uh, three feet to the rear property line where the wall is uh, situated. Um, it, when we developed this, we didn't consider the wall to be part of uh, a, uh, a structure. And I believe, if I'm correct, that we have some kind of an exemption there. I have to see why we put that in our plans to see if that was. Uh, Where's the 15 feet? The buffer isn't specific to structures or buildings. It's just it's a buffer area. 15 to be feet left open. 15 wall. foot wide from the property line. Back toward the building. Yes. Which could include parking. The buffer area is supposed to be reserved for screening. So no physical improvements within that 15-foot buffer. You can never do that in a million years. You can't 15 feet back there. Right. Not if we uh, are looking to put the parking. Part of the problem with the parking is you want to have a, the ability to back out of the spot. And in general, we're looking at about a 24-foot uh, space to back a car out once we uh, exit the parking. Yeah, I know it will. So, so, so I guess the answer is there is a third barrier. Yes. <laughs> I don't imagine it's 15 feet there now from the property line to where the front bumper of the parking lot. To the existing parking lot? There is. They, yeah. yeah. Uh, because they're proposing a retaining wall and probably, I don't remember exactly, but maybe 22 or 23 feet of new pavement. Yeah, as much as they have the buffer space feet. now, but they won't with the proposal. Yeah. Are you talking about the data? Yeah, yeah, DDs. So where exactly are we looking for retaining wall? In the front of or something in the back? In the back. 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 It's in, in the, the rear, rear around the back. back. <coughs> push that out. Maybe 12 feet between the property and the rear and the property. And what is behind this DD dining room? There's a there's a residential. It used to be a house. I think we're still houses on the street. Yeah, I thought he bought that. I thought he was a little previous owner. I don't know whether what they did. Can you point out the edge of the existing parking and um, barrier? I would guess right along where the new parking line. Right, right, right around where the new is, parking line. Uh, this is where the the uh, blacktop. Um, currently ends and then you get this sloping hill coming to the back. So what we propose to do is, is just to fill in this. Uh, but this you don't own it or, or the restaurant doesn't own that six or eight feet below. The drop? No, over here um, we have, I believe, when we put the wall in, we'll have three feet from the rear property line. So we're looking to uh, fill and, and to pave and create a retaining wall to lift the whole back up. But we definitely have uh, property that goes back this far. But they're given a drop, you'd still be 17 feet above. Yep. Yeah, it's 17 feet, definitely. So what kind of screening is it proposed? Well, I think that, that I, that's where I'm headed. But I think if you can zoom in, what, what's being removed? What kind of screening is being removed? To install the retaining wall, all of it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it has to I, be. and and I was tr I couldn't remember if those were mature trees and combination of kind of 
by default overgrowth, but it looks like it's both. You have both, yes, absolutely. So, back to Joe's question. <laughs> it, it, you're creating a creating a significant wall, obviously, and and but to to achieve the wall, you're removing. Um, I'm guessing yes. half of that existing screening. If we're just looking at this image, uh, all of it. We're going to go from the existing blacktop. None of it's on the adjacent property. I mean, that the house with the pool. I see some of that must be on their property. Um, yes, my my discussion was we're removing all of ours, but there is there's probably just a couple of feet left on the on the rear property. There's not much. And then I'm going to go for that. They're not going to like it. But the first thing we have to do is find out what, what are the requirements. Because I, it seems like now, Joe, we're, we're running up against a residential neighborhood, and there are some buffers also there right. between a business district and a, and a residential neighborhood. That we, it may be covered in 15 feet, but I think, you know, I think it requires a careful analysis. I, 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 I think you might be well, to we go back and reference all the all the zones that are touching this property. Because our zoning in that in those areas is pretty peculiar. Yeah, so it, is the topography with that drop causing you to have to put the seventeen foot wall up? I mean, are there any other alternate ways to do that? Because I mean, it's the, up high. No, I know, and I know. Then it comes yeah, it goes enough. Right. Yeah. I think it's and uh, at the bottom there's a, a about six or eight feet which runs all the way across. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean not that we're here to assess the, the return on investment here, but just for discussion purposes. What is the net gain between the angled parking that's e existing and the ninety degree parking that's proposed? We're looking to add uh, 15 parking spaces, I think, with the... Uh, Not 15 new. 15 new, yeah. So there, there's a net difference between that part, that new, those parking spaces and the angled ones I see on the... They're not going away, though, John. Yeah, these are all uh, pre-existing, and the, these are all proposed. So there's no ability to park in that slope there, which could be about uh, no. 35 to 45 degrees slope there. I'm missing something. There's existing parking behind the dime. Uh, yes, there's, there's these five. Limited, yeah. Yeah. Pardon? There's limited spaces back there. Yeah. There's a loading spot. We have our ADAs. Uh, these from here. So you're going to keep all of those spaces, which essentially there you're just going to straighten them out. You're going to make them 90 degree instead of angle parking. Yes. And then you're going to create what's against the retaining wall is the new one. That's what we propose. Yes. So essentially what you're showing on the lower portion is existing parking. You've also though, uh, removed the accessible parking from the front, which is easy access to the restaurant and you moved it to the back. We we don't propose to move this. You're not showing them. I think these are no but there are two handicapped spots right there. Uh mm -hmm. yes those two we want to move to the back. Yes. So you have no handicapped parking in the front? Not not at this time. I think we have a that's pretty uh, inconvenient to somebody's handicap. John do we have a ramp in the back? A handicap ramp is in the back. Yes yeah, so we have these spots um proposed to go right next to the handicap. So I, so I sort of get the idea, because actually handicap parking in the front is bad because you got to back in and out. Well, that was my concern. Um, but but handicap parking could work in one of those angles of parking spots. So that, yeah. so that I, I hope everybody goes in the front door. Yeah, sure. Okay. <coughs> and are the, the new 15 spots, are the, is that totally all of the new parking? Or because you because you're going to straighten the angle into the, the 90 degree, that gets you a couple of new spots. I think in the end we're we're looking at those uh, 14 brand new spots. 
plus of what we have right now. Mm -hmm. So we're cleaning Is up. Is that all the new parking, my question was, though? You have, you have additional parking behind the building, right? Right now, it's, there's a couple of parallel spaces. Well, I'm, I'm seeing right, angled yes. spaces on or the angled angle. spaces behind the building. Then, these angled spaces are not Yeah, when we, when we uh, move this back, we'll be able to get a 24 foot. We hope to have an existing condition driving lane. plan that shows the current parking layout. Unchanged channels on there. I was about to point. Sorry. <laughs> you don't, you I had the game on. I had the game on. And we what, were winning. What's the total number of spaces that you're proposing here for the site? Maybe. These are the angled spaces of the first. <coughs> so if I'm just, say, eight, maybe nine here. These, I guess, are not on your property. No, they're not part of the property. So there's nine angled spaces across the back today. Which, which, he, which it looks like he's proposing to, to create 90 degree. That's correct, with the uh, extra 24 foot driving. So you have a net gain of. 12 spaces. So 12, not 15? I mean, that's just an informal. Right, right, right. That's not going to go over well with the houses below it. One thing not shown on here either is the refuse area. So we're going to lose. I think right now they're using the property next door. I'm sorry. Right now they're what? I was saying, I think, I believe right now the, the trash enclosure is on the adjacent property. No, no, it's been moved. Not. It's not there. They have been moved. Okay. Well, there's there's nothing shown on this plan for for a, a, an enclosure an enclosure for uh, trash. So that is that'll chew into the proposed spaces. All right. So uh, as a site plan concept, obviously cleaning up the parking provided the ninety degree. I mean, those are all good notions. And uh, it, it's the seventeen. You know, the introduction of the seventeen foot high retaining wall. Um, is a significant impact. Okay. Coupled with uh, basically 100% impervious coverage, right? And that's the other thing, I guess, well, not really. To be able to do yeah. so, you know, when you're thinking about screening, look at the back of the Austin Library. There's <coughs> my retaining wall there. We planted evergreens. And they're pretty well masked it now. So, so you, so you have three, three rather significant challenges, right? Yes. The, 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 actually, the Board of Zoning Appeals needs to weigh in on before this can actually go forward, right? Okay, so, so I think you've got, from our point of view, it's the wall, height of the wall, how are you going to screen it? Are you managing the buffers? The answer to those, I think, are no. So you need a variance for that. Um, and you and reconsidering the, the rear parking and how you manage the accessible parking. Um, and and so what? So I think John brought up. What happens to those parking spaces that appear to not be on your property but are used by the diner? They're they're no longer being used. Uh, the garbage uh, disposal bins and the the parking that previously was there has been uh, taken away. So, so that's we, gone. Okay. So we cleaned up the site plan to square a corner okay. to show we okay. were presented. I wasn't sure because that goes back to my ways. Okay. You know, I'm still having trouble understanding if the back slopes down to where the wall would start. Yes. Uh, By several you. feet? No. She slopes down, uh, it's about 17 and a half for differential. So, well, it's pretty flat. So this is the pictorial of the, the back lot as she comes down here. And we're going to, we're proposing to build this up 17 and a half feet. But you won't see that. I won't see that in the parking lot. From our point of view, the clients and the, Owners won't really see any impact, but the 
the impact will be from behind. We have to. to we have to. The joining. You'll, you'll drive it in there. You the joining with them. No, the two halves of that. You'll see it from the, the side, the north side, the south side, yeah. and the west side. Right. Yeah. And 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 I think to to Barbara's point, um, prior to the, or maybe not, but my point is if if that was to happen, then I think that you need to do some kind of screen covering with, with some tall trees or something so that um, the integrity of what those two north and south and west houses see today won't lose because I'm sure that they don't want to all of a sudden go from looking at trees, you know, to m might be a pain in the neck in the fall, but anyway, that's their problem, um, to, a, to, to a wall. You, you know what I mean? I understand. Okay. All right. Can I, may I ask one question? And I'm sorry, Jim. No, no, I'm writing this out. Um, <laughs> Get your pointer, John. Pardon? Get your pointer. <laughs> I, I've got, I, we need one, right? I don't yeah. think they show up here. I, the, the idea that, you know, obviously we have, we have asphalt from year to year, but we've got, it appears to be this no man's, no man's land of existing asphalt. And I'm, I don't recall, I'm not sure how it's contributing to the future use of the gas mart or whatever that's going to be calm. But the notion of creating new parking when we have more asphalt here, that, I, I don't know if there's an opportunity. I mean, I almost, you know, I'm kind of saying, what's, what's the solution to the challenge here? I mean, what about like a valet parking situation where you could you know, maybe not completely satisfy all the parking need, but maybe through valet parking you could uh, stack some cars, maybe develop a relationship with an adjoining property owner. I mean, it's, I think you got to kind of give that some thought too, I guess. Yeah. I that know. adjoining property, is, what's that? That's from a fill and fast, right? Something. Yeah. Yeah. Fill and fast years ago. So, so, so the, the, the owner of that station has expressed uh, right. so, yeah, so an interest yeah. to separate the two properties. So well, they've been I'm sorry, who? The, oh, the owner of this property has expressed a, a desire to separate. So this parking and, and this whole area is is not part of the equation. No, I understand. So uh, yeah, those discussions. Actually, it's a right, right. 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 Okay. okay. We, we extracted in all the questions we have for tonight. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions from the public? No questions from the public. So I think based upon what you heard tonight, there's three, three major variances required, plus treatment of the buffers. I think John's point of the, you know, the, 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 for lack of a better way, the orange line that's up there, um, is there a way to introduce some kind of uh, softening of that? The other question is, and I don't, I don't know the extent you want to pull it too much, but the entrance ramp to that parking lot on the north side is just terrible. Well, it's no, it's just, it just doesn't work as a sign of, you know, coming out is fine because there's no parking over there, but going in, you've got a rather complicated mess and the curbing, the curb cuts don't really line up with what people want to do when they go in. Okay, take a look at that, sure. Do you have our December 14 memo? Uh, I don't think I have it, no. We'll give it to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We'll adjourn this. Yeah. Okay. Text and then we refer. Do it. Let's pull the chair off. <laughs> sent a note around with regard to Snowden Woods and in terms of what's going on. So let me bring the planning board up to date 
there was a scoping session last Wednesday. Uh, if any of you would like a transcript of that scoping session, I received it today. I'll be more than happy to send it to you. I have it in an electronic format. Uh, the uh, applicant has agreed to a 60-day extension of time to submit the final scope, so that puts us now into, I think, March 8th. It was originally January 8th. Uh, it was a little back and forth, but we have that 60 days there. Uh, As a matter of housekeeping, though, is that something we need to insert into our minutes? Since uh, we reflected another. Well, the, 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 the question you had asked was with regard to specifically the text amendment. And that is something I think that be, can be put into the minutes because council has, in fact, and the sponsor has agreed to essentially an open-ended extension uh, with regard to that 62-day okay. requirement under 270-59. I'm that sorry, can, what project are we talking about? The Snowden Woods project, which is the 198-unit development that's proposed where the Board of Trustees is, is lead agency. Um, and on that, the 62-day uh, uh, the clock, they have basically put it on a hold uh, while, they're, while they're doing their environmental review, or at least starting with the scope. Uh, if anyone wants, if, any, if the board either as a whole or, the, or individual members want to comment on the draft scope which was circulated, I think it's till December 27th that comments are being accepted. Uh, but as I said, I'll be more than happy to send the transcript around. Uh, I think we have now uploaded all the documents that have been received with regard to that project, both from the uh, applicant as well as from those who are in opposition, and that's primarily through Jeff Smith, the attorney that he's uh, retained, as well as the planner that he has retained. So uh, that can be yes. no, no, I was just going to. I was just going to say um, for those that were not at the meeting, um, you, you didn't really miss a lot. I mean, most of the stuff I was covered really. Well, oh, okay. Um, so, so you know, I mean, they didn't really share. Any additional information as far as I was concerned? I don't know, Joe, you were there. So, so can the 62 day clock actually start until they actually decide what the scope is? Frankly, no. There's nothing I mean, we can, there's, not, there's no opinion that this board can render until we have something right. to look at. Which is exactly why they have understood that, that, that it's basically okay. be, being in a hole. So uh, that's that's the status right now with it. Uh, we're waiting for some additional comments if they come in. And, and then uh, preparation for the final scope will, 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 will go underway. And we're now, as I said, looking at, a, I think, a March date for that. There was a request at the meeting uh, by uh, Mr. Smith's planner and others uh, to publish the proposed final scope before, in fact, it becomes final. Uh, the plan is, in fact, to get that out to folks before so that they can look at it. Uh, and make what other comments. Uh, and uh, uh, there were a number of comments that board members had as well, uh, uh, the board of trustees members, and it's anticipated that those would also be included in, 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 the, in, in the final scope that comes up. But that's where Snowden Woods is, you know, right now. So if I shared it, it, it in just an observation as an individual, really as an individual from the other side of the table more sure. often than, than here, I don't no, specifically if there are um, any technical, or, and again, any procedural nuances for a planning board, whether they're a, an interested agency or not, to opine on a scope document. I've never seen it not happen. Doesn't mean it, do, it doesn't happen or it right. hasn't happened. I sense, given what a wide bandwidth of trajectory on this might or might not be, it feels like that's probably a good prudent step, but I'll leave that to your decision. So it, it, if, if what, I what, what I'm hearing is as individual planning board members, we can, as it stands today, we're sharing observations for Anything we want to contribute in the scope document. Anything. And, 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 and I don't want to make it sound like it has to be an individual. You know, if the board wants to also do that, there is nothing that prohibits that. But either individually or as a group, if there is something that, you know, you want to comment on with regard to the draft, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, I personally would welcome it. Yeah. 
are they going to build on the foundations from the previous builder? What are you going to do with those? You know, Barbara, it's interesting because I think uh, when that was raised with the, the sponsor's attorney, I'm not even sure that he was aware that some of those foundations were there. Oh, he knows they're there. Well, I know that other people have Well, he maybe yes. The, I think the, the owners know. I don't think there's any question. Yeah. So, so let's, for the moment, let's separate two right. things. The first piece is a text amendment right. Right, to allow this particular kind of construction in this particular zone. Right. Once that's done, then there's a site plan review, right. which affects all of that. But right now, the question is more global right. as to whether this is an appropriate fit for the, for the existing zone. Right. And, and the outcome of that may be, yeah, text amendment. The other outcome of that may be, this is clearly bigger than a text amendment, and we need to rethink what we're going to go to the zone approach. And that's when we also had the discussion at the meeting with regard to the, when the comprehensive plan issue came up right. as, as part of that discussion. So, 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 so let's be clear about what's, where things are right now. Um, so right now it's just, is this an appropriate addition to what's permitted in that zone? Right. Okay. And All that's right. where we are at this point. Because without that, it doesn't go anywhere. Right. So we, that, that has to be considered first. The, 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 you want to call it an overlay or whatever they want to call it. That's really that. That's the petition that's really here and which sort of driving the train at this point. But there's still planning metrics that would suggest how that, how the answer to that question is determined. Of course. And so that you know, I guess I'm mischaracterizing where I'm trying to go is where do we contribute or potentially contribute? to establishing the planning metrics both for the zone text change potentially and <coughs> any future scoping document or, 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 or DEIS that may or may not support because those seem unless I'm misunderstood those seem to be running concurrent tracks. Right. Well and, and, and ultimately whatever goes as you know John what goes mm -hmm. into the final scope is going to what's determined what's going to be the EIS. So if individually or a group, the thought is that some of those metrics should be thought of at this point. I would agree. They should be there now. Uh, because ultimately that's, you know, that's going to be the, the charge to the sponsor through the lead agencies saying, you got to look at this and you got to do this. So uh, uh, I'd rather it be more inclusive than not. So uh, Sean, is your question, is the planning board an involved agency such that you could comment as a planning board uh, to the scope or to any of the documents that are submitted. Well, yeah, I mean, there are many layers to that. It, I, 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 technically, I, we, we've been listed as an involved and interested agency. But in, I guess I'm asking inform, informally, right. where, where do you see us fitting into the evolution of of this process, more importantly, over the next two months. I think, I think the role of, of this board is particularly important. Uh, I think, I think it's necessary. Uh, I think the input, again, what, what ultimately becomes the final scope will determine the way that that EIS is going to be looked at and how it's going to be formulated, uh, and. The input that this board can have, be it the metrics that you talk about or the other, because again, going back to the chairman's point, when you're looking at a text amendment, as we're going to be talking about with Cardinal McCluskey in a few minutes, we're not talking about just this particular zone. We're talking about how it's going to impact. Because one of the points that was brought up, and you watched on a bit, is what zones are we talking about? Right. You've got the CDD, you've got the PWs. How's it going to affect those zones? On, and it's a much more global issue when you're talking on a text amendment. Uh, but I think uh, how this board views that, and it, again, collectively, individually, is important, uh, uh, you know, as a comment to come in there, it, both as, in, as an involved agency, to say, you know, what do we think is important that has to be looked at here? Uh, and uh, so I think, I, think, I think it's critical in that regard. And, and, they, and, and, and they are, in a sense, going on, on the same track, but at, this, but at the end of the day, right now, it's how's the text amendment? How does it jive with what is our now our comprehensive plan? 
how do we how do we get from here to there, and uh, uh, you know, and, and all and all the issues that come in because again, you're dealing with the CDD zone, uh, and you're looking to put in a, a significant amount of development in in, in that zone, uh, and uh, you know that's that, that that that's clearly a very significant issue that will have to be dealt with. Are there multiple properties that might be impacted with this tech amendment? Well, there, there are multiple zones that could be affected. There's more than one CDD zone, and it's different PW zones which go along the waterfront. So there are other zones that could be affected. Uh, the way they've written their proposed text amendment, it would have uh, it has a certain acreage requirement, and frankly, that's one of the issues that's presented here, because it is the opponents' contention, I'll just talk for them for a second, that the amount of acreage that these folks, the sponsors, say they have, they actually don't have. Uh, they're claiming, I think, that they have 13, 14, but if you look at all the assessment maps, it's just slightly over 10. Uh, so maybe they're not paying their fair share of taxes, and that's a whole other issue. But, uh, but, but, but in, in either event, uh, it does affect a couple of different zones. Uh, and that's uh, and, and there were properties within those zones that could be affected uh, because any text amendment that we would make uh, or that the Board of Trustees would ultimately approve would require uh, a review of how that would impact all the, all the different zones. So there are other places that would happen. It, it's not just limited to this one parcel that, you know, that, that's all that's noted. So if they are saying that this property is this size but it's not actually that size, so at what point do we determine that part? That well, is, is it factually correct or not? Well, I can tell you this. Having spoken to the assessor, the assessor goes by the maps that he has. And those maps have it at, at, at a lesser acreage than these folks have. Uh, there was a question of they adding in the firehouse, for example. But they're not because the firehouse doesn't cover that much acreage anyway. And it wouldn't be theirs. Uh, so that's a matter that has to get, you know, and I have spoken to the sponsor's attorney and said, you know, you got to resolve it. He said, well, we had a survey. I said, your numbers don't jive with what the village has. Simple as that. So, so, the, so the, but the, but the dilemma is, is that there are at least two to three zones involved. Right. Mm -hmm. One of them is the, is the conservation district, but the others are also impacted. Right. And as, as, as Stuart said, there are other zones there are other there are other locations that are in their zone similarly. So the question is, you know, the text amendments that are being proposed, are they is there a threshold acreage where that you could apply that? For example, in the in the PW district, you know, down below, if you have more than three contiguous acres, you get extra bonuses, right? But if, but you can be in a PW and not have three acres and you don't get the bonus. So those are sort of the things that will would, would necessarily lead this to be a text amendment. <coughs> right? If these conditions apply, you needed to record that. that that's it one is. of my points. It is. It is. That, that, oh. It's recorded. But but so that's where you know. So I, I and, and you know and it's always nice to travel with a site plan, but in this case, it's not going to help you, right? Because there are other zones that don't don't fit, fit that exact description that will be affected by it. It's similar to the process we talked about, what we're going to talk about next, is that we looked at the text amendment for essentially boarding school, right? We decided there was a minimum requirement to do that so that you couldn't just drop it in any two-family spot and you needed to have the appropriate, you know, uh, accessory, you know, facility. So I, I think that's right. I don't know. You know, I think it's worth this board talking about it. I just don't know when it's right. I think there's a lot that's been distilled. Right. And, and, and I don't know what the, the village board is going to say. Uh, this, I want these things included. Right? If, if it's worth us sitting down with a sort of a special meeting, since we already talked about that, <laughs> uh, to review this, you know, and come up with commentary, I think that, that's fine. Um, and and you know, we, we, but but I think I just don't know when the right time is right. for that because I think it's still a little bit too loose for me. Right, I got you. And the other thing, just to point out in terms of the zones, 
It also, even though they're saying that the text amendment would only be for the CDD and PW, you need to consider the zones that abut that, for example, the S-125, which yes. is directly adjacent to the CDD. And they're would very be, upset about that. I know. Uh, and they would, but so you, you look at that impact as well. So, so if factually, if the size is what it is, say it's right. less than 10, right. in that case, where does this text amendment stand? Well, well but, it, but it's, but it's, not, it's not just the CDD district. That's it's right. In, it's all of them. Yeah. So the CDD is a smaller part. Right. I don't know, I don't know whether the text amendment, I don't think the text amendment is going to affect really the other spots. No. Okay, because the, I think the densities that they're proposing, if you run the calculations, seem like they fit within the zones that are already prescribed. It's when you get to this very lightly dense piece that they need to include is where this is where the requirements are. So it's not, it's 10, 15, whatever. It's, it's probably, you know, six of one and four of another kind of makeup. We need Jim Stout's color code. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Mention it to him. Okay, so are there any other questions about that? And, you know, um, we could plan a, uh, a review of the scope sometime in the first week of January. Fine. I, mean, I, mean, I feel like we, it's in everybody's best interest. No, we, I agree. I mean, we got to do it. I mean, we can't prolong it. But I don't think we should wait till our next meeting. No, but I think it's a good idea. Okay. So we'll find a day. Okay, so are we good with this? Okay. Thank you. So, part two. Cardinal McCluskey. Uh, and we have some folks here, but let me bring you folks up to date. Uh, the Board of Trustees had a public hearing on the uh, proposed uh, text amendment based upon the local law that you folks looked at last time. Uh, the day before that public hearing was to be held, which was December 5, I received a, a call from counsel for uh, the applicant who advised that after going over the plans or the surveys, they realized to their <coughs> chagrin that in fact 145 South Highland is less than one acre. And as you folks are aware, one of the recommendations that you made was in fact that there be a minimum lot size of not less than one acre for these residential schools. Uh, that was the, the issue with regard to the acreage uh, was brought to the board's attention, <coughs> board of trustees' attention on the 6th. Uh, my recommendation at that time was to uh, go back to the planning board because the recommendation from the planning board, which the Board of Trustees was looking toward, which was the local law, uh, <coughs> had the one acre minimum. And uh, we now have a situation where we have a particular uh, applicant who is coming in now. It's sort of in line with what we just talked about. Uh, but the applicant has now realized that, in fact, it's not a one acre. They don't have one acre. How big is the lot? 0.85. Uh, and one of the questions uh, that, in fact, uh, Lynn had asked is, could they take part of the adjoining 155 property and essentially make that to their one acre? Uh, I'll let Mr. Loud talk to that, but apparently that is not uh, a viable solution. So, and, and uh, the issue about joining the two lots, as this board well is well aware, that was not something that... Uh, uh, the Cardinal McCluskey wanted to do. They want to keep them as two separate, distinct lots. The same owner? Yeah, it would be this. It would ultimately be the same owner. Right now, Cardinal McCluskey does not own 145, uh, Mr. Ludlam. They uh, they're in contract, uh, and if, if the text amendment were to go through, they would in fact effectuate that sale. Uh, but uh, right now, that property is owned by I believe it's Executive Properties. Uh, but uh, uh, but Cardinal the next McCluskey. One is there. I'm sorry? The next property. The next one, 155, is Cardinal McCluskey's correct. And that, that, that's where they already have one of the schools set up. So uh, my thought and the Board of Trustees agreed was to, uh, you know, return this matter to this board uh, for the uh, purpose of 
uh, you know, looking at the issue again with regard to the uh, to the to the, the one acre minimum uh, that we put into the uh, uh, that was put into the recommendation and that was put into the proposed local law. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, representatives from Cardinal Kluski are here. Their council is here, so uh, if there are any questions directed to council, I'm sure he could answer as well. But that's that that that's the most up to date that I have on it for you folks. No doubt, South. I'd rather be tied to an ant pile. <laughs> now, a joyful day was it in your office when you discovered you had 0.85 acres? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, for, the record, imagine. for the record, Daniel Lau with the firm of Cutty and Fader um, uh, here on behalf of Carl McCluskey. Uh, the co-petitioner um, executive properties is represented, I think, as you recall, by Anthony Monteleone, who uh, I contacted about tonight's meeting. He, he actually had a prior commitment and could not attend, but uh, he said he sent his full support um, uh, regarding, regarding this, uh, uh, regarding this uh, request for re-review of, of, uh, of what we have here. Um, so again, the the total the sum total of both properties is over one acre, uh, but the um, in our case uh, for the executive properties that uh, Colonel McCloskey is looking to purchase, it is 0 0.85 acres. Um, looking at you know which is approximately 6,500 square feet, trying to uh, for example do some sort of lot line adjustment or something with the existing. Cardinal McCluskey property, the, car, the existing Cardinal McCluskey property is even smaller. Uh, it's uh, roughly half an acre, a little less. Uh, so taking that would not be, in my mind, um, reasonable or feasible, uh, particularly since that area is sort of the open space area that the, uh, that the Hayden House, the, the, Cardinal, the existing Cardinal McCluskey property uses. So instead of uh, moving ahead uh, with something that we weren't sure we'd have to we could use or have to go to look for zoning variances, uh, we figured we would advise council as soon as possible. And that's where we are at. We do understand, though, that the concern is that the um, this amendment would affect um, the properties in all the T-zone, and that's specifically to make sure that we're not, uh, you know, in, in line with any sort of spot zoning. Um, in looking at the the properties in the T-zoning district, and of which there are four areas designated in the, in the village, um, a significant majority of them are, I would say, very small lots in the line of, uh, I think the, the minimum lot size in the, in the zoning district is 7,500 square feet. Uh, and I, would, I, I took a rough count, but I, I think there are well over 1,000 properties um, in the T-zoning district. Uh, using the GIS and looking at s the scale of, of the property that, that Cardinal McCloskey is look, looking to purchase. Uh, compared to other the existing properties all over the, that are designated T zoning district, I would say there's to be extra conservative maybe 50, maybe 60 properties uh, that are similarly sized of the I'd say you know 0 0.8, 0 0.5 acres. Um, uh, so again, it's while it is affecting the district, uh, it is not affecting the vast majority of properties within the district. And, uh, and of course, there were the other um, the other restrictions that go along with this, including that has to be the reuse of an existing building, the buffering, the parking requirements that satisfy the requirements of the uh, the same the senior 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 residential facilities, which are also allowed, which are allowed in the T zoning district, um, and then of course this this, this requirement of an actual acreage. What will your recommendation be? I would, I would respectfully request something along the lines of, of, of reducing it down to 0 0.8 or something like that. So, so, so if we were to look at the top four, which you said there are some that meet this that, that could be adaptive reuse. What do they sit on? I mean, I, I, mean, I think it would, would, would be, I, I don't know how it, I think for consistency's sake, there should be more than one example where this would work. Can I just ask you a painful question before we try?
try to dissect this back into it. Does it make sense to reset the bar? If the zone text revision, as it's currently written, was adopted, could you go get a variance for 0.15 acres? I'm, I'm not certain that you can, because the way it's written is it's not less than one acre undivided by an existing street. This existing, pre-existing, non-conforming. Well, under the yes, street. however, we have a, the best way to say this is there are other, there are other sections of our zoning code where that language exists and positions of land boards have been taken that that is something that is not subject to appearance. So I mention that, only, I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm mentioning it because that's what has happened in the past. So I don't, you know. Well, if you buy the property next door, there's no, is there an impediment to approaching it? There's, there's not technically a, an impediment to merging them. Um, the objective of Cardinal McCluskey has always been to keep them separated for their own operational purposes, as well as you know the complications of you know trying to have two buildings on one parcel, uh, and then sort of having the possibility of having a campus, which was something that nobody ever wanted or contemplated. For their own um, sort of uh, flexibility, they. they from the board of Colonel Kluski was they, they, were, they were interested in purchasing, but they didn't want to have Go back to that planning board uh, until this problem came up. They didn't know about this problem then. Well, when we, when, we, when we submitted the original petition, we didn't include a, 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 a property, um, a, a, a floor, a minimum size. Um, was, I forget, um, was the need to front a state road one of the conditions written into the text amendment? No. What was the language that were added, or could that be added, and would that reduce or eliminate the other properties in that area? Yeah. Yeah. Mark, you well, if we're going to change the metric to, from one acre to 0. 0.5, I think we have to do, because again, I, I mean, I've used this word already several times tonight. The future optics of this are inescapable. To go through a four or five month process on this and settle on the language and settle on the one acre bar only to find out the applicant doesn't have one acre and that we subsequently went back. It, that, that's just, that's not going to look good in the future when somebody else is rooting around. For, for your own operational purposes, are you going to be doing the same thing on both sites or are they different functions? Same thing. Because I guess the thought would be if there were different functions, you could really have one corp or one entity operating one part and one entity operating the other part. I mean, if I mean, the, the need is the need is for a similar institution. Do they have to own the one acre? Ah, could they? Could you take? Could you take an easement for the point one five from the other property? Take that man to lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In which case, the. The property still remains with Cardinal McCluskey mm -hmm. on 155 for tax purposes and everything else, but you grant an easement of, if I don't know, I don't And it could, it could separately be conveyed. You know, it for, would be. Because, again, would be. I, to, 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 to be clear, a lot of the, um, the need, the student need, is driven by students that they receive from Westchester County services. So if there was some point where things changed with Westchester and that need wasn't there, then they want to make sure that they're able to convey the property. If, if mm -hmm. that's something that, that the board, because again, I think that overall the property, you understand this property, but if, if that's something that would work and it wouldn't it hinder the conveyance of the property to some future owner. Um, no, it, just, it would be a condition. The guy buys the property knowing that there's a permanent easement Exactly. Or if they wanted to turn it into, well, right, but if they wanted to, um, if, if, if they wanted to convey it to another use that's already allowed in the zoning district, 
and then they could, then Cardinal McCluskey, then the easement would be necessary for that use. That the easement could be eliminated. It could be extinguished. Correct. And then that, and then the, um, bless you, bless you, bless you. And, then, and then the property could then be conveyed. Say, say for example, if, it, if some two family property came on or if the zoning changes, then there could be some different differential where it just, here, you are now going to use it for what, what's in the zoning district. So Th that's the answer. The answer well, is an easement. So, so, but do we do anything to make the current use non-conforming? The by current use, the Hayden House, the current Cardinal McCluskey facility, is operated by uh, uh, by a use variance from 1980. I think soon after the uh, St. Augustine's Church was was demolished by New York State. But easement does not have to do with use. It's just so I don't think the easement would have anything to do with it. And in fact. Functionally, so, so, uh, so I, it would be a matter of us accepting it. But why is it working for, for when it's going to be for a title? But it doesn't work for a use variant. <coughs> um, the zoning board wasn't wasn't really willing to go down that path at the time. Um, I think the zoning board. The, the issue 40 is forty years. Uh, the, the issue is, what did they make them prove in nineteen eighty? Zero. They came in. They asked for a use variance. There wasn't a, a, a criteria, and one of the big criteria for use variance, which is very hard to, to prove, is that you cannot realize a reasonable financial return, dollars and cents proof, experts from any of the uses that were ongoing, that, that are permitted in that particular, they would have had a very hard time. And, and Mark, if I remember, when 145 came before zoning, there was, there was very little documentation this time around right. dealing with rate of return. Right. And, and the other issue was, the, the other way that you might be able to do it is to say that there's a pre-existing, a non-conforming pre-existing use, and you can go from one non-conforming pre-existing use to another. The problem is that one of the owners of executive testified, basically nobody is in that building anymore, and, and we have substantially stopped that use, which blew that theory out of the water. Okay, so, since there's no, as far as we know, impact to a 0.15 acre easement being granted to this. It sounds like to fill in the gap. To fill in the gap. That will run concurrent with the use. Will that do the trick? And then it would get him up to his one. I know, but I mean, is that. So, so the board could so the board could approve yeah. the the board could yeah, the board could approve the text amendment mm -hmm. and then for you to meet the requirement of that you'd have to produce the easement. The easement uh, let's just I just want to make sure real quick the easement would be for well, the easement would have to be for operational purposes. I just want to make sure we think through it. Uh, well, the air variance, right? I mean, um, if you're, if, like, for example, earlier in the evening, we we're talking about, you know, having, if, if you have, if you need parking spaces, you get an easement, and it clearly says it's a parking, you know, it's parking easement for parking, and you, you know, pay, you pay a one-time fee or a lease. In this instance, we're talking about existing properties. There, you know, it, it, it will have over an acre uh, in, in the ownership. Um, Maybe well, it's it time be, it could be a it could be a uh, landscape buffer or I mean if you carved out a clever piece that's never mm -hmm. going to be used by you could say for a landscape buffer to be contributed to for nothing nothing can be developed in this buffer or it could or, or also I believe you could you could carve it into um, the use the total use of that um, one acre so you know what that's Let's them, them. Let them. Yeah. Let them I just want to make sure. I didn't want to. I didn't want to over. I didn't yeah. Mark gave me the big <laughs> idea. It's up to you to polish it up. <laughs> I just didn't want to walk away. That if everybody had a clear thought of it, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Well, you have a couple of options. Yeah. So it's hard because there's a retaining wall between the property right now. So and a set of steps that dribbles it down. But 
you could envision a sitting area, you can envision something that's ancillary to that use that doesn't impact the other site. For recreational, so that, recreational, yeah, outdoor space. The horse riding. Although, yeah, you know, and, and it probably doesn't matter because it's the same zone, so the buffer might not kick in. Correct. Correct. Right. I, well, I, I agree with Stuart. But you, you'll figure it out. Now. Yeah. You've got I mean, all, you got, all you'll have to do is come back with the document to show that you've got it and it's running with the land. As, and as, part, of this, as part of the special plan. Correct. Part, special plan. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So the village board can do its thing. Thank you. Okay. Do we want to still add the text about uh, also the condition about being on a state road? Joe made that comment about uh, further. I, think, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't if it's I, 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 I was suggesting as a it, limited it would, fix oh, would, before the uh, easement It would require ideas. us to go back and study whether we've now made this the single place in Austin. Mm -hmm. do yeah. so. I think it brings you down a that would be difficult path. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. coughs> You're going out on a high note, Mark. Thank you very much. That being said, um, we have the November minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just kidding about being tied to an ant car. I didn't do any of them. Because we didn't have the people that were here. For both of them? I, I am looking at October 24th minutes. I was not here. I was not either of them. I wasn't. Absent, absent. So the people that were here were John Fry, Michael Belgotti, Barbara and Juan. So, but I don't. And then November minutes we can. So let's do October. Um, is, is there a motion to approve the minutes from October? So moved. You were here. Yeah. You were here. <laughs> you were second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Carry. So now, as a matter of formality, John Price signed this. <laughs> okay. What what day? We put the day in date, it doesn't matter. Yes, it is, we did it. Right. Okay, and so we also have the November uh, minutes. Um, it appears that Mike and Juan were absent. So is there a motion from somebody who was not absent? <laughs> all so Reggie, Walter Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Get one of those just, just, yeah. one of those color charts. Since charts I was here. here I can sign it. Okay. I say that there was a remarkable job in this month. So complicated. Nice job. For me. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I've signed everything else. Um, okay. So, Joe, I have Justin Pizzotti here with certain uh, things to plaques for people. So. Oh. Okay, so, trustee, if I may, <laughs> are we staying on the record? So we probably need to go over there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. So for the record, we're not going to No. It's been, it's been uh, about six years, almost to the day, that I haven't been in front of the planning board. That long? A little bit different, you know? <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's my honor and pleasure to actually to be back here in, in this forum. Um, uh, Liver Sat, I do have two proclamations, which is uh, an honor for me to present this. So I'm going to call Reggie. Please. Thank you. You have my formal name here, good. <laughs> Read it. <coughs> Excuse me. If I mispronounce anything, please forgive me. It's, uh... You have a cold? Wait, I'm No, 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 cold. <laughs> I'm just emotional about this whole thing. Come on. <laughs> Whereas the board trustees of the village of Boston and recognize individuals who have been shown some uh, committee and dedication to the community and we acknowledge outstanding service 
and contributions to the quality of life uh, in Austin. In Austin. And Reggie Bush was appointed to the planning board effective April 1st, 2005. Prior to serving in the planning board, Reggie served as an insulting board of appeals, having served in both of those boards. He has been a unique, outstanding, and development in, and the growth has taken place in this community. Reggie, along with his fellow board members, are sure of giving careful consideration of each application, um, ensuring a referral review. The work diligent and improve of the community of Austin is always uh, meaningful of preserving or preventing preserving the beauty and charm of our community. The residents of the village of Austin um, benefit greatly from Reggie's service to the community and our community is a proof uh, of the recognized of recognizing and his dedication of the village. <laughs> and now therefore now me Mayor Victoria Garrett <laughs> of the Village of Austin, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, do here recognize Reggie Bush for service and urge all residents and merchants to join in our own Reggie. Here, here. So, so, um, this is, uh, oh. <laughs> so it's kind of a bittersweet um, evening for me. Um, and as uh, my good friend Manny said, that uh, you know, Sony Board and I came here. I realize it's been since 2005 to the planning board, but the one thing that um, I'm most pleased about, and um, I met with uh, Deb McConnell t earlier today, and, 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 and mentioned this, that when I drive around Austin, you know, there's things that I see that we've worked very hard to build this community: Walgreens, um, 25 State Street. Harbor Square, and it just goes on and on and on. And so for that, I'm very proud and pleased and have been very proud and pleased to um, sit at this table with such fine professionals for so many years. So my hat's off to you guys in continuing that. And um, while I'm going away, I'm not going away um, because I'm gonna be doing some other stuff um, with the village. So just know I'm still around and um, now you guys have to take me and Mark out. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Mr. Chairman. Got a visit here. Yes, I got it. I'll come by, I'll come by for a visit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you. Merry Christmas. If I may go down room, please, if you may come. You might get a book. Me? Yes, please. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Someone okay. say it right. Um, so I'm going to read all the whereas. Um, whereas the board of the village, the board of trustees of the village of Austin recognizes individuals. I'm going to skip that because it's the mm, same. That's all right. Yes. I'm going to get to the main part, which is the valuable part of what, what you have done for us. Where Barbara has served on the planning board for more than 25 years. Yeah. Um, in many of those years, as a chairwoman, we appreciate giving her time, giving her of her time, and realizing that she has many chances over the years in our village uh, to improve our village. And know that she, she and her fellow board members work diligently uh, towards continuing the improvement of the community in Austin. Barbara dedicated her dedication to her community, and Evans always gave careful considerations and assuring the fair review of each application. Whereas the village of Austin here benefits greatly from Barbara serving the community and improvement that she's recognized on her dedication to the village. Now therefore, uh, Victoria Gary, 
Mayor of the Village of Austin, and behalf of the Board of Trustees, Sia recognizes Barbara for her service and urge all residents and merchants to join as honoring her. Barbara, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say something? No, but nothing really I can say. I've enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, I have a question, Barbara. Yes, sir. The day, and I had hair then, <laughs> that I walked through the door with this slight southern accent, I know it's slight, occasionally it comes out. You, you were very nice to me, you've been unbelievably nice to me from all, for all these years, but I've always wanted to ask you, what went through your head when I walked through that door that night? Which I think was about 23 or 24. That's a long time ago, I don't remember. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you couldn't have been more accommodating for someone who was coming into this and wasn't quite sure what he was coming into. And so you were... Are you sure now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. All right. Thank, Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. One more thing, so I may call the chairman of the planning board, please. So I think we have something else for somebody else. Which way you want to go? I'll go to the back. <laughs> <laughs> Serve with you, every single one of you. I've learned a tremendous amount from you 
both from a, a legal standpoint, but mostly about being good people, community servants. Um, I, I look forward to seeing you in the community, um, every single one of you, I, whether it's at the coffee shop or that kind of thing. Uh, perhaps maybe even on the opposite side of an Article 78, Stuart. Um, I'll be here. <laughs> I'm sure you will be. Um, but again, I, I want to thank you all, one and all. Um, it, it's been both the, uh, the zoning board and the planning board have been very kind to me. Um, uh, nobody has, has firebombed my house as a result of advice that I've given. Uh, and, and I truly appreciate your friendship. Thank you very much. You're right. so, so before we close, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you can hear me back there. But I have to say to, to Barbara and to Reggie, sort of, sort of, Barbara has sort of been the rock of the board for, as we heard, over 25 years. And her attention to detail, it remains so precise and keen that it's amazing the details that, that she uncovers and helps us all move forward. Uh, as you heard tonight, she, she, she studies the sites, she visits the sites, she, her comments are very direct and, and, and questions are, cr are crafted in a way that she extracts useful information. So thank you for that, Barbara. Um, and I'm sure we will, and I don't know whether you'll be back. I think that's how you actually got here in the first place. Uh, so, uh, you know, decide whether you want to sit in the audience or not. Um, but anyway, and, and to Reggie, you know, um, it goes without saying, a lifetime of commitment to the village of Austin um, from when he was a high schooler um, and, and throughout his career with, with, with so many different things, IFCA, CAP, you name it, planning board, library board, zoning board, um, just an amazing reservoir of information for Austin and, and also a champion for, for a community that sometimes is a bit underrepresented. <coughs> you know, Reggie worries about the, the, the people who are, are working poor. I mean, that's his, I mean, it's his passion. These are vital things for this community. And, and Victoria talked about it the other night, I think, at, at, at even the scoping session, where the, the, it's part of the fabric that what we do. And so I have to say, Reggie, it's been outstanding. I, and I've known you on all of the boards that you've been on and the other committees you've been, and as a, as a friend for, I don't know, generations, actually. So thank you both for your, for your service. Mark, we've already talked about you a little bit. There's one other guy who, who is also moving to new statues. My good friend, Manny Caseda, who, who I have to say has been a true roll-up-your-sleeves member of our village board for six years. I mean, literally walking the community long before anybody thought that was a good idea. And, 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 and bringing forward constructive suggestions. He worked very hard in his first years working with the building department and the planning department to try to add more clarity <coughs> to the process that we, we, we go through here. So that when people come in, they, they, they sort of know what the expectations are going to be and there's a very clear path to get there. Whether they choose to follow that path or not isn't always clear. It's okay, some people are trailblazers, let's call it that. But, but, I, but I do want to say thank you, Manny. You've been nothing but supportive to this board uh, and to the village, and I hope you continue to be visible in that area. So no going thank nowhere. you. <laughs> okay. With that, is there a motion to adjourn our meeting today? So moved. moved. Reggie, you can, set, you can move it. Barbara. Oh, that's our <laughs> problem. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs>